And we are back in. I'm not sure if I have my mic muted for that, the last saying goodbye thing, because I am an idiot, but either way, you're good to go. Uh, jumping right back in. We're gonna continue the roll quest and say apparently the next one unlocks at the next level. So if it's like five quests for one for each level, that's pretty good. We'll see. I really want to see what this thing looks like. Going. We have followed up on every report concerning Gleipnir, even those that beggared belief. The most promising suggests the blasphemy is currently stalking the South Shroud. We are to proceed there at once, for there is no telling when it might strike again. The Elder Seatseer is already en route to Roots Lake. Let us not keep her waiting. I think this dude deserves a name, honestly. Uh, Roots Lake, that's gonna be Camp Tranquil. While I'm out here, I want to do something. Where's Raya? I want to see if she says anything because, like, our room's been running. Yeah, she's just giving white mage crap. I was wondering if she would have anything specific to say about Arun being here. Raya Osena is Arun Sena. Um, I think they're twins sister and she is she and Arun are both the younger sibling of Connie Senna biologically biological siblings a very unfortunate family all things considered considering that young Pajal are taken away from their families uh but you know Let's see greetings Carolyn as luck would have it my sister Ryo frequents Camp Tranquil would do well to meet with her first god damn it or she may have knowledge that, of this threat that can aid us in our search. Hey Raya, now I was just there like two seconds ago. I'm back. It's been too long, Raya. Connie, I was afraid the situation might force your arrival. Note that this reunion was under more joyous circumstances. It is heartening to see her joined by the bearer of Eitawa's will. Hey, Look at that! I recognize that I have White Mage unlocked. Unfortunately, Gleipnir's poison cannot be cured by any healing force known to us, as I'm sure you have already learned. Nevertheless, I have faith that together, we will find a way to defeat it. I'm just taking pictures. Yeah, it is actually playing the Fennel music, isn't it? Huh. Every moment is crucial, so let us dispense without further pleasantries. Have you received word of Gleipnir's whereabouts? Odin! Is this Odin? Frick! Odin just spawned! Look at the weather changing! <laughs> Odin just spawned somewhere in the shroud! <laughs> this is unrelated to, uh... To Gleipnir. Odin's a special boss that only shows up every couple of days. <laughs> What are the chances? I have. Re it recently ambushed a poor traveler who succumbed to his wounds soon thereafter. A tragic and increasingly common trail. Yeah, I want Odin to be involved with this blasphemy. I was just mentioned. I, I was just thinking that earlier. Like, Odin should just show up and slap the crap out of this thing. No others in Camp Tranquil have come to harm, but some claim they feel a presence in the distant trees, staring at them with a malici malicious intensity. I struggle to find the courage to venture beyond the safety of the camp. While its victims exhibit symptoms reminiscent of the creeping death, Gleipnir's corruption seems only to affect those who have been assaulted by the blasphemy itself. We have yet to confirm a single instance of it spreading from one individual to another. That's somewhat reassuring, but it will provide little comfort to the people here, I think. If Gleipnir comes, any defense we mount will come at great cost. Those who fall wounded will invariably die. I'm at a loss, and the people under my care can see it. They grow tense and bicker amongst themselves. Some even accuse me of standing idly by while the monster roams free. As if I'm not doing all that I can. I apologize. Would that I had come to you sooner. Would that there were more I could offer you. 
Not every burden is yours to bear, Connie. He is right. It is the duty of all seed seers to face this threat, and so we should do so together, with the aid of the elementals as well. Under different circumstances, I would agree, but their strength has waned since the calamity, and I am reluctant to impose upon them. Indeed, when I open my thoughts to the elementals, I shudder to hear their distress. Once we have laid those of blasphemy, the elementals will be at peace. Well then, how do you propose we go about that? First, allow me to speak with people here and assure them that all will be well, by Gridania's resolve to weather the storm remains steadfast. No road is closed to those true of heart. I suppose I shouldn't be surprised that you begin with an earnest and heartfelt proposal. For my part, I shall reach out to Arun, and perhaps together we can find a way to offer similar comfort to the elementals. I have no doubt we will require their assistance in this. Thank you, sister. May the twelve watch over and keep you both. I trouble you to accompany me. The presence of a storied hero would surely lend credence to my claims and that the people's difficulties will soon be at an end. While you attend to that, I shall gather what information I can from the wood whaler stationed here. Try look to me at the camp proper when you have finished. So, uh, <clears throat> tension in the shroud, <laughs> Odin, the dark divinity, rides again. As someone who always plays that macro whenever he spawns. It also means we're not going to be able to see anything until he's killed. This weather stays up, so enjoy not having a nice view. <laughs> if we are to convince the people that they need not live in fear of Gleipnir, then my words alone may be insufficient. Do not comport myself as an imposing figure blessed with martial prowess, to say the least. You, on the other hand, are renowned as a peerless warrior who has triumphed in countless trials. Simply looking on your features fills me with confidence that this crisis too shall pass. I pray you stay by my side, that those we speak with might be joyed by your presence. Oh! Go follow me around. Try as they might to go about their lives as normal, there is an unmistakable tension in their every movement. Let's do what we can to put their minds at ease. Does this mean if you're doing Ishgard that Amrick follows you around? These seers are sitting pretty with their guards and finery. What do they care if a beastie is running amok? They'll be fine. That's why they're doing nothing while it hunts us. We'd be fools to trust our lives to those who don't care a whit. Aye, past time we went so. Least and Uldah, they don't pretend to look out for the common man. The Elder Seed's here. I was just, uh, er... I promise you that we are sparing no effort in our hunt for Gleipnir. However, it will take time, and more may suffer before the beast is laid low. Nevertheless, I ask that you place your faith in me, if only for a while longer. Love the Twelves would enter people with all my heart, and I will not let our enemy torment us forever. I... I understand. Man's gotta give voice to his worries from time to time. I nothing I want less than to abandon my home. I'll stick around for now. A single scratch is enough to spell one's doom, they say. Nothing but to wait for death to come. How can we face a beast like that? Do not give in to despair, my friend. Know that I shall do all in my power to see us through this crisis. Hold fast to hope and encourage others to do so as well. I'll try, Elder Seedseer. I'll try. I know you've placed yourself at risk leaving the safety of the city and coming here. And that means a lot to me and my I'll stay close to the whalers and pray news of your triumph reaches us soon. Thank you. I promise you that it will not be long. Emmerich meeting Sid. Oh, that would be good. I saw it, a gargantuan beast stalking the woods with horns the size of my leg. What's to stop it from coming here to fill its belly? Oh, is it one of those? Oh, I hope it's not one of those, like, generic, like, big stompy 
It's like my least favorite design. I want something creative. Come on. Vipnir will do no such thing, I swear. I shall see to it personally that the blasphemy does not come within a mulm of this village. Hark, for brighter days lie ahead of us. Truly, Elder Seedseer? Ah, perhaps I've let my imagination get the better of me. You are a beacon in these dark times. I pray you restore the peace soon. I shall. And be certain. I think, honestly, think this dude deserves a name. He hasn't had a name this entire time. He's just always been Keeper of the Entwined Serpents. Like, all the other second-in-commands have names. You got Papa Sham. You got... Guy whose name I can't remember because he's a sea wolf. I don't remember. I feel bad. But this guy just doesn't even have a name. He's just Keeper of the Entwined Serpents. Will that be all for now, Elder Seeds here? It will. I have done what I can to quell the unrest. But so long as Gleipnir lives, they will never be at peace. Sometimes simply lending an ear does wonders, as must be the case for the elementals, yes? Indeed, you are correct. Today was a welcome reminder of that truth. Important step in our journey. Mayhap I should visit these settlements more often. Doubtless some here think me as distant as the elementals, so rarely do they see me in the other. You have served me admirably as protectors thus far, for which I am grateful. Yet until we have found and laid Gleipnir low, I must continue to impose upon your good will. It is no imposition, Elder Seeds here. Save me on the killing fields of Cardano. My life is yours, now and always. Your life is your own to command, but I thank you for your words. Conviction fills me with confidence that the path we walk is true. Even if that path takes us far afield. Hmm. Did I ever tell you that, when I was a young student, I would often steal into the woods with a dear friend of mine, much to the chagrin of our teacher? Deep down, I suspect there is still a part of me that yearns to wander where I should not. I want to see what Gleipnir looks like. Isn't this that company of heroes guy? Like, wood killer, but like, that's what he was before. Yeah, it is. Elder Seed's here. Word from the border. We've got ourselves a right bloody mess by the sound of it. What has happened? Per your earlier instructions, the whalers closed the roads to all travel while we scoured the wood for signs of Gleipnir. Now a group of locals are demanding to be let through. Thanalan. They're terrified by the sound of it, screaming about the creeping death and gods know what else. Spare grips their hearts. If it consumes them wholly, then we may have yet more blasphemies to contend with. I will speak with them. Wild rumors fuel their panic. Truth and compassion will convince them to see reason and return to their home. If anyone can, it's you, Elder Seeds here. Doing our best to keep them calm for now, but my man's words painted a grim picture. I pray you make your way to the border as quickly as you can. I know it's not about the blasphemy, it's about the effect it's having on the people, but like, I still want to see it. Oh. Wait, people found Odin. He's on this map. We're gonna go kill Odin. <laughs> Clear up the map. So the way Odin works is that um, every after he's killed, like his fate spawns every couple of days, and if he is successfully killed, then the next time he shows up a couple days later, he will be a level higher, and he will have the face and name of the person who delivered the killing blow. Uh, and if he is not killed and fail, the next time he shows up, he is a level weaker. However, you don't really feel. At least I have never seen one. There he is! Four, three, two, one, one. So what does he do? Is he just gonna stand there? Or is he gonna leave? Soon, Earth. Soon. 
Huh. Interesting. I've never seen it just like time out and fail. I've always seen the one where we like fail the DPS check <laughs> at the end and die. So. Interesting. Anyway. That super failed. <coughs> Let's go back to our roll quest now that the freaking thing doesn't look like crap anymore. <laughs> that didn't happen. <laughs> Oops. Much nicer looking. Look at how much nicer. You can see all this stuff now, and you could not before. So this used to be a much bigger lake. Obviously, as you can see by these, these used to be like islands and stuff um, before the calamity rained out the lake. And we may proceed without ominous uh, tension weather. There they are. I want to see this thing. Come on. Let us through, damn you. We're standing here while the creeping death nips at our heels. You're telling us to die. Those rumors are false. The Elder Seed Seer herself sent word that the creeping death is not responsible for the recent incident. We mustn't surrender to panic. Return to your homes while we deal with the threat and pay no heed to baseless stories. Stories? Stories? I've seen the dead with my own eyes. Don't tell me what is and isn't true. Hearken to me, my come before you now to assure you that the Creeping Death has not returned. Only those who have been wounded by Gleipnir are in danger, and so I beseech you to take shelter in your homes until the threat has passed. Gleipnir? The beast I saw in the wood? We have to run. It could have followed us. You saw it? Where? Not far from here. Those glistening horns, those terrible chains, reaching out to drag you down to the seventh hell. We ran and ran and never looked back. But don't worry, it didn't catch any of us. No one's marked, see? That means that means we're safe, right? I think that guy is. But but say we weren't quite fast enough. What then? Its horns and claws are where the poison resides, and even a scratch would be cause for concern. Take it, you have been scratched. Even a little scratch. Then, then it's too late for me? Is that why my body feels like it's on fire? You told me the branches tripped you up. You said that's how it happened. You said. Heavenly winds, guide us to the font of strength. May we drink from it and be made whole. Don't feel any better. Do it again. Do it again. Help me. She can't. Andre has no effect. There can be no mistake. This is Gleipnir. Even so, I ask that you do not lose heart. Stay strong, for if we surrender to fear, the beast has already won. Oh, I don't want to die. Please help me. Oh, he's... And now we have an actual monster. 
This is not Gleipnir, but I bet this thing can spread it the same way Gleipnir can. You said... you said it wasn't... Why? Why? Liars. Liars, all of you. None of us are safe. None of us will. And there goes another one! Despair made manifest. Twelve for Fend. Is there nothing that can be done for these poor souls? Nope. Gotta kill them. Already dead. Quite literal. Not but one thing. I know, I know. We must lay them to rest. Contain the threat. Let's see what Gleipnir looks like. <coughs> Could you imagine if you're like a level 12 hanging out here and you walk by and you see someone fighting a level 86 creature? Oh, well, I mean, you wouldn't be level 12. I'd be level 12 because I screw off and go where I don't need to go. Technically, you'd be around level 30, but still. Beasts are dead. They are at peace. Would that it had not come to this. I was powerless to prevent it. You did all you could, Elder Seedseer. Is that what's going to happen to us? Is there no hope? What you witnessed was the fate of those who fall to deepest despair. It feeds upon grief and anguish, and is more deadly than Gleipnir itself. But as I swore to you that you shall defeat the blasphemy that haunts our homeland, so too do I swear that despair will not be the the faith and look to the horizon. Brighter days will come. As you say, Elder Seed's here. As you say. Leipnir is not here, and so you are free to return to your homes. I but urge you to take care on the path back. Will help Seed's here. This storm has passed, but a darker tempest roils in the distance. So long as the specter of despair looms, the people will struggle to take any words of comfort to heart. We will see more tragedies like this. The elementals, too, cry out for a solution. The longer we struggle to resolve this crisis, the more innocent we put it. Raya O said we would turn to the elementals for assistance, and I know now that she was right. So I will seek audience with the great. However, there are preparations I must attend to first. So make the proper ablutions of stand. They return to the adder's nest and await the summon. I want to see what Gleipnir looks like. <laughs> Come on. I'm pretty sure that I know what it is and I'm kind of like, I don't, I know what it probably looks like and that that is not what I want it to look like. Like, just Tiny feet, big body thing. Like what those uh, Arcasodra in the dungeon. I don't like those. Those are boring. But the cardinal virtues kind of had unique designs, more or less. So maybe these guys will too. Let's see. This will also prove if it's every level that there's a quest. Let's see. Despite our best efforts, we have been unable to prevent further loss of life. I foresee even greater hardship ahead. As we press on, we mustn't forget the words of the Elder Seeds here. We must strive to remain undaunted in the face of despair. She is preparing for her communion with the Great One. When the time is right, she will call upon us both. Till then, my friend, stay strong. And there's another one! Who is it? It is. This one is 87. So 567. So it is indeed one every level, then. Neat! A gift undone. The situation has worsened since last we spoke five seconds ago. Vipnir grows bolder in his attacks, and the conjurers are spread thin in their efforts to attend the victims. Moreover, we are no closer to finding a means to counteract the blasphemy's poison. 
with no choice but to wait until death claims them. Some are overwhelmed by hopelessness, becoming mad beasts that lash out at their former countrymen. Such tragedies all too easily beget further tragedy as bereaved loved ones are in turn overcome and share in the same horrid fate. The people speak of these incidents in hushed whispers, afraid that at any moment a monster might appear within the midst. Must slay Gleipnir. Without so further delay, because I want to see what he looks like. We still don't know where he is. Indeed, let us hope that the Elder Seedseer's efforts to enlist the aid of the Elementals are successful, and that united we may at last cleanse the Twelve Sword of this evil once and for all. Urgent news, Carolyn. Gleipnir has ambushed a party of wood whalers. They are engaged with the blasphemy near the Guardian Tree, where the Great One slumbers. This bodes ill. Has it divined the Elder Seedseer's intent? Is it attempting to prevent her from communing with the Elementals? Ah, in any event, we cannot let Gleipnir harm the tree. The Elder Seedseer bade us rendezvous with her at Sorrel Haven. Leave at once. I want to see it. Show me. Show me. The boy. I actually probably should have just taken a gate. I feel like a gate would have been closer. I miss Smooth Rock. Oh, Smooth Rock! How we miss your smoothness. I think it was this one. I think this was Smooth Rock. Maybe. Hard to tell now it is without its telltale smoothness. Perhaps they will finally show us Gleipnir. I would like to see. Battered arms and armor. Oh, so they are. Are strewn across the ground. But there is no other trace of man or blasphemy. Ah, well. We got these guys, so that's something. Imagine these guys like AoE, like somebody who's like just coming out of Gridania for the first time. Funny. Don't you slap that hand at me, mister. Show me. See, I think I know what happened here, though I pray that I am wrong. There is no sign of the wood whalers save their arms and armor. Seasoned warriors would never cast aside their equipment. But here it lies, and I see not a single body. In the face of certain death, even the bravest among us can succumb to despair. Before the blasphemy's poison took them, they transformed. Leipnir could not have gone far. He may be watching us even now. I would love to see what he looks like. Please show me. Be on your guard. The air is thick with corruption. If the wood whalers succumbed to a man that would a hard fight. Though I dread the thought of hurting our brave soldiers, we cannot allow the creatures they have become to roam free. Let us form two groups to more quickly track down and call the beasts. Once we have finished, we shall regroup under the boughs of the guardian tree. I wanna see! <laughs> Show me! I kind of want it to look like a knuckle of it. It probably won't, but that's what I'm picturing. If not, like, if I wanted it to have, like, a cool design. Find no trace of the whalers turned beats. Okay.
the last quest I have until I level up, so I'd like to see this thing at least once. <sighs> oh, fate. Be, be gone. Bunch of tanks just like idling around here. Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> yep. Please show me. Work is done then. Loss of so many brave souls is tragic, but now they are at peace, and the Guardian Tree is safe. Let us take comfort in that. I but pray that the Great One will hear my plea. sound good. Elder Seed's here. Are you hurt? The Great One is filled with fear, an all-consuming fear unlike any I have ever felt. It spoke unto me, and its words were clarion. Drive the evil away. Drive the evil away. It can think of naught else, and so we will not receive the aid we seek. Not until we can dispel the dread that claws at the forest's very heart. No, this was our last hope. I hear a, a snufflin. We are not alone. Show me. What? What is it? Oh! It's a behemoth with chain and horns. I'll take it. That's pretty cool. There can be no mistake. This is the profane beast, the blasphemy that has mired the Twelve's wood in despair. Gleipnir. Stay back. Makes for the Guardian Tree. We must stop it. Poison. You mustn't let it touch you. Such fearsome strength. Well, I don't think they're gonna kill Connie. Oh, he big! Damn! This is cool. Oh, now is not the time for an echo flashback. What could we possibly be looking at here? In accordance with our covenant, we Pajal have been blessed by the elementals. From the moment we are chosen, we are bound to act as mediators between man and nature. The most skilled among us are honored as seed seers, and it is their duty to guide Gridania through times both poor and prosperous. I cannot say which of you will be found more worthy. In my estimation, you both have the potential to become seed seers. 
Of that I become more certain by the day. Is this Arun and Connie? Hey, not Arun. Uh, Atala. But I don't want to be a seed seer. I never wanted to be a Pajal, either. I never asked for any of this. Why can't I live a normal life like everyone else? How come I don't get to grow old? Why was I cursed with these horns? I like them. And maybe we didn't choose to be born this way. But I don't think it makes us that different from everyone else. It's a rare gift. A blessing, even. Yeah, it is, Connie. And, he, and if we can't use it to help others, then... And if we can use it to help others, then we should. Don't give up on becoming a seed seer, Connie. We'd all be worse for it. Little baby Connie! <laughs> so cute! Blessing? I never thought of it that way. I suppose I just hated not having a choice. Maybe you're right. A Tawa, though. I feel like I need to know who that is. I think A Tawa was from before, so it can't be. They weren't wouldn't have been kids at the same time. Maybe he's someone who died for her. Maybe he is her friend. Oh, this is absolutely her friend. Yeah, honey. This is absolutely her friend. Yep. There he goes. Yep. Cool. So these are still gonna be sad and personal, I see. Matron is merciful. The elder seed seer has fallen unconscious, but is otherwise unharmed. The blasphemy must not have touched her, for I do not see the telltale mark of poor. Still, I am no healer, and she should be looked after by those who are. I shall carry her back to Gridania. We must leave before Glypnir returns. Await me at the adder's nest. Allow me to thank you again for your assistance. The Elder Seed Seer has been delivered into the care of Isumion, and by the grace of the Elementals, will she make a full recovery. In fact, she has already regained consciousness, but is not yet allowed to receive visitors. We can but wait for now. God damn it, I was useless. I could do nothing while the Elder Seed Seer wiped near alone. I was to be her guild, but I stand before you while she lies abed is proof of my failure. Wouldn't have wanted you to throw your life away. You really are the hero of whom the bards sing, aren't you? You suffer terrible trials, yet still you stand tall and resolute. Thank you for your counsel. Close I came to forgetting the lessons of my past. I've spoken of it to few. Truth be told, it brings me shame to recall it. Ooh, you were a Garlean soldier? Oh! Interesting. Fought at Cartano, not as a soldier of the Eorzean Alliance, but as a conscript in the Garlean Imperial Army. Clad in armor and magitech, 
Another drop in a sea of pitiless metal. You grow numb to the violence and the killing out of necessity. It becomes routine. Turn your next meal. And then the moon shattered and the dragon emerged, and when the dust had settled, I was another body clinging to life amongst the fallen. I remember staring at the burning sun above, growing weaker, wondering if the heat or an Eorzean's blade would finish the job. It wasn't death that but salvation. I was delivered from my well-earned fate by the Elder Seeds here. He deigned to save a man who once spared steel against her people. Her kindness didn't end there. Once my wounds had healed, she welcomed me with open arms. Never did she regard me with distrust, nor did she ever make me feel obligated to repay my debt. She fought not to take life, but to safeguard it. Through our friendship, I came to see the wisdom of extinction, pledged my remaining years to her service. I would have accomplished nothing to throw myself against Gleipnir in vain. And even if there was profit to be found in the sacrifice, I could not abide it. Your words served to remind me of this. We will defeat the blasphemy, I, but we will do so without forsaking that old dear. This I swear. Well, that under people you don't expect to deplore for. Cool. So I can't do. Can't do the next one yet. But it is 88. So that's good. That means it is one each level. We are going back to Radzotan. Welcome. When the satrap asked us to entertain a party of honored guests, I was wondering who it might be. This is a lovely surprise. By the way, I heard all about Kalzal from your friend Grahatia. I understand there was nothing that could be done, but I was heartened to hear he meant us no harm. I cannot thank you enough for dispatching the beasts. The smallest, as the smallest token of our thanks, your food and drink tonight are Marion's treat. Speaking of which, what shall I start you off with? Uh, sure, piping hot mug of pie, please. As you wish, I join your friends and I will bring you your drink. Welcome back. Whatever did the Radiant want with you, pray tell. Our allies have sent military delegates? That's news to me. Mind sharing the details? So blasphemies now plague all the realm. It will only get worse if what Father said is true. As it did in Amarot. If that's our motto. And shouldn't we expect the effects to grow more severe as it feeds off its own spread? As if people transforming into those monstrosities wasn't bad enough. If the flora and fauna, if the land itself turned against us. No one would survive. Here's your order, friend.
May you find comfort in these dark times. Where do we go from here? If there's one thing we've learned, fighting blindly and simply reacting to what comes will accomplish nothing. I like how every voice or uh, you've just been like, oh, she's cute. Because, <laughs> like, I agree, but, like, I am entertained. <laughs> we must find a solution that addresses the fundamental cause. Before our strength is exhausted, before this crisis spirals out of control. Is there something? Anything we've overlooked? If there is an answer, Hydaelyn herself will have it. Twas she who bound Zodiac and forestalled the final days. Alas, we have heard naught from her since the Tower of Babel. Whether she cannot or will not speak, I can only speculate. Even the flower she gave us is no more. Like, we just need to go jam our face into the ethereal sea. Have we heard from Matoya? We actually- nobody has- like, we sent word to her for her opinion, and nobody has said if we've actually heard back from her. In our time, we called it Elpis. You would do well to remember the name. So advised the Watcher. But what could be the significance of that name? It is entirely unfamiliar to me. To me as well. It meant something to the ancients, though. In our time. Most surely. Yet I do not recall a single mention of it in the records of Anida. Another dead end. And quite literally. It's not as if there are any ancients living we could go and ask. I mean, you could ask not alive as such. the ones left not in Emerald. dead. Elidibus. Eh? I sealed him in the white orosite of the crystal tower back on the first. Um. Contained within that reservoir of ether that maintains it, ether that is returned little by little to the sea. Naught may remain of his soul. However, if part of it lingers, we might be able to speak with him there. I know uh. we can no longer make that journey, but you, my friend, still can. We are reaching here. How do you even know he's going to want to talk to us? I feel like we should just go and ask the ghosty Hythlodeus and vision Amarot as long as it hasn't dissipated, but like... I mean, sure. It's worth a try. I mean, I'm glad we're going back there, actually. I yes, we can but act and hope for the best. Kind of glad that we haven't forgotten the first exists, honestly. If nothing else, should we learn the first is safe, we'll have that much more reason to keep fighting the good fight. That said, the odds are not in our favor, to say the least. Which is why we're fortunate to have Uriange up there on the moon, working hard to make all the necessary preparations for our departure, should it come to it. And why we have nothing to lose by staying the course till the last instant. Indeed. To the last, let us all do what we can. I will consult with Master Matoya and see if she knows of a way to reach Hydaelyn from the Ethereal Sea. And I will visit the nation's leaders and attempt to ascertain how far the final days have progressed elsewhere. Keep me abreast of your findings. I can seek out and slay the worst of the immediate threats, only to slow the spread. Unease, terror, despair. Try as we might to suppress them, these emotions will return to harry us time and time again. But when they do, remember this. Your friends and loved ones are out there somewhere, sharing in your struggle. You are not alone. Sorry. 
So ends the brief respite before the next revelation. Hmm? Hmm? Yes. So much left for you to see. Emmett, please. It's been how many hours now? Where beginning ends, and end begins. Oh my god. We're... Imagine they play the title card now, and I'm like, bruh. Oh my god. Uh, okay. Final days. How far has the phenomenon spread, and how does it manifest itself in each land? I must reach out to my friends in each nation and find out all I can. Uh. Well, I suppose I do feel better on a full stomach, after all. Burning skies? Blasphemies? Not if I've got anything to say about it. Beasts and blasphemies may be running amok in nearby lands outside the influence of Razatan and the Alliance. If so, I may need to go hunt it. Nothing like a feast to lift the spirits. I trust you enjoyed yourself as well. So if the forum truly has been spurred to action by Hydaelyn's prophecy, then is it not odd that the Anti-Tower was entrusted to Master Mat who bears them no love? No doubt she had or has a reason for this, and I would know what it is. That is a very good point. <clears throat> anyway. Now then, is there anything we've forgotten to mention? Are your arms and armor in good order? we are good. Maybe we'll get to see Lena! Ah! We can tell her how her old grandpappy's doing. <laughs> In that case, it's time we each attended to our tasks. And when you arrive on the first, give my regards to Reed. Tell her I miss her. Oh! Ah! Cute! Oh, perfect. That's exactly what I was expecting the quest, <clears throat> the achievement to be. They are actually going through the song lyrics. Those valiant. It's the bit from the, uh, the Charlene part of the thing. The wings of hope, you rise up through the night higher, oh higher. Spin the different steps. It's neat. Eee! Return to the Crystarium! I'm so excited. Take this, Carolyn, my spirit vessel. Empty now, of course, but it should allow you to operate the tower's systems in Umbilicus. Even if the smallest fragment of Lydibus' essence remains, it should be possible to locate it. As for access to the Umbilicus, pray seek out Lena! Yay! For assistance. Chances are she still stands watch at the Ascensor Gate. Should she or anyone else ask after me, tell them. I am living my life to the fullest, that I am happy, hardships and all. Well, we had best be on our respective ways. God's willing, when we see each other, we will see each other again, Erebon. Yay, Lena! <laughs> so happy. Okay, let's go. I am so glad that we have not forgotten the first from like a story writing perspective and I'm so happy that we're coming back here like this is great where's Lena? oh she's outside okay. I like that I'm back here, honestly. I was walking around here sadly being like, nobody's gonna be here. Nobody's gonna be in the Crystarium on like, in like a couple of days. Lo and behold, there will indeed still be people in the Crystarium because of this. This is so cool. For those not aware somehow the crystarium uh, is like the sort of main city area shadowbringers the equivalent of what charlian is like ishgard and stuff ah uh, old shadowbringers music 
Hope Lena's voiced. I like her voice. We see Re Reen. I wonder if Gaia will be. Lena! Speak to me, girl. Come on. No, oh, she's not voiced. Not yet, anyway. Maybe she will be later. Carolyn, you are returned. Have you been well? You and the others. Eh. As well as can be, I suppose, technically. Well, glad am I to hear that. I trust my lord is enjoying himself. Eh, you know. He said this to you? These exact words. Oh, to know that he is happy fills my heart with Thank you, Carolyn, for taking care of him. Aww. When next you see him, please tell him not to overexert himself. Futile request, though it is. Yeah, you know, if that's you. And tell him that all is well here. Peace you gifted us continues, and we work hard to build new lives for ourselves. In the course of this, we occasionally bicker, but we've never been more optimistic for the morrow. If I had to mention one dilemma, it would be the question of our governance. Even as we speak, fate rages, uh, rages on over how we should run the city in the Exarch's absence. Most are of a mind that the Settlement Council should continue to oversee the general running of the Crystarium, while representatives are elected to determine policy and handle diplomacy. Thus far, nothing is set in stone. However we choose to proceed, we will not replace our lord. No one could. Have we recently observed any usual phenomena? No, I cannot say there have been. I'm curious that you should ask me this question, though. Some days ago, Reen came and asked the very same. She was rather unsettled. In stark contrast to how cheerful she has been. Ah, where is she? She and the other Crystarium youths just hosted a festival, you'd see. Ah, the right, the post -e the Eden, the Eden festival thing. Ah, cute. It proved so popular that there are already plans for another celebration, one much bigger than the first. Between her preparations for the festival and the restoration of the empty, she struck me as a ha as happy and full of life. So when I saw her in a state of such worry, I couldn't help but feel worried in turn, especially since she wouldn't tell me what troubled her. I dare say she would be more willing to confide in you. May I ask you to broach the subject with her? Absolutely! Wish to enter the umbilicus? Very well. I shall fetch the key at once and take the opportunity to find Reed. Please wait for me in the city, in front of the cabinet of curiosity, shall we say. I will be along as soon as I can. If I'm trying to go into the Umbilicus, why would you take me all the way down to the Cabinet of Curiosity? Like, you should just meet at the Etherite Plaza like a normal person. <laughs> there you are. This way. Not in the cabinet of curiosity, outside the cabinet of curiosity. Oh, this is a spot. This is the exact spot where, like, a Shadowbringers cutscene happens, too, so that's extra fun. The following event cannot be skipped. 
You may wish to cancel any pending duty finder registrations. This is not a cutscene. This is not a several cutscenes will play in sequence situation. We're fighting. What are we fighting? Maybe we're not fighting, but like, you know, we're probably fighting. Or it might be one of those like conversation things, which is fine. I'm cute. Like, that's cute as well. My eyes deceive. Is that really you, Carolyn? Hey! Oh, we're getting like a checkup with the gang, I guess. Ah, it is. Full glad am I to see you hail and whole, my friend. What a wonderful surprise it is to have you back with us, and at this most opportune time. In case you haven't heard, we are planning to produce a tome chronicling events from the Flood to the Night's Return. For this project, we intend to draw upon records kept by the world's peoples. Historical and contemporary first-hand accounts will be the centerpiece of the tome, but yours would be the one to crown them all. I've been asked to contribute a chapter on the soul, a subject that is key to understanding much of your endeavors. In the course of developing the spirit vessel, I gained valuable insights into travel beyond the rift, knowledge that will allow me to attest to your ex existence and deed. Right, if you've been doing soul research, you might also be someone who we can talk to about the Akasha stuff. Interesting. Anyway, anyway, there's no end to the questions I would ask you, but if you could indulge me just one for now. In your quest to restore the night, you faced many a formidable foe. Among them, who offered you the greatest struggle? Oh. Oh no. What's the joke one? <laughs> Titania, driven mad by light and loneliness. Vothri, in his misguided self-righteousness. Hades, who bore the burden of his people. Or, this may come as a surprise, but I'm not gonna pick that one, but oh my god do I want to know. It's a joke one for sure. But like... <laughs> Um... Who gave me the most trouble? It's one of these two. Three. Dang it. Hit the wrong button. Ah yes, Lord Vothry. Former leader of Yulmore and the final light warden you cast down. Building his paradise on Mount Gulg, he proclaimed his existence immaculate and took the name Innocence. Your reckoning with him was, without a doubt, a defining moment in history, and we will see that it features prominently in the tome. I know you'd love to talk her ear off more. We really should be on our way. Those documents from Yulmore won't collect themselves. Of course, of course. And afterwards, would you care to join me for tea? I was hoping you might clarify a few points in your treaties. Till next time, then. Do tell the others to look after themselves. Our overzealous friend, in particular, remind him not to overexert himself. Again and again, till his ears fall off, if that's what it takes for him to take it to heart. Who else are we getting? Gasp, is that the warrior of darkness? Oh, it's the babies! Ah, Rikikio! It's her, it's really her. What are you doing here? If you're going to battle, I can give you some medicine. I made it myself. That's not Riki, you'd only give her a stomach ache. You've come to see Morin. Oh, we've come to see Morin to get his advice. One of the guard finally agreed to teach us how to fight, but first we need to choose a fighting style. While I know that I want to be a mage, Arkil isn't sure. Magic isn't really my thing, so I was thinking of taking up the axe, or the sword, or maybe the bow. They all seem alright, but it's hard to decide, so I thought I'd ask Morin. He knows about lots of things. You asking my opinion? Oh yeah, he just left. He isn't here? Aw. 
Ooh, ooh, why don't you have the Warrior of Darkness juice for you? I'm gonna tell you to pick up the axe, kid. You look like Ardbert, and also, you're asking a warrior right now. Who <laughs> thinks suits Arkle best? Axe, sword, or bow? Look, you need a tank. <laughs> so, like... Uh... Let's see. Yeah, go ahead. Try, try axe. Axe. If you took up the axe, you could be just like you just like Ardbert. And yeah, there we go. Ardbert, the warrior of light. I love that tale. Let's borrow the book today. It's really popular though. I hope it's still there. Thanks for helping me decide, warrior of darkness. I'll start with that style and maybe try something else later on. When I get really strong, I hope to have a bout with you. Goodbye, sweet baby. So cute. Oh, you're so cute. There they go. Who else is there here that we could check up on? I don't even know. There's so many people. Hmm. Such. F oh no. This is Feol. <laughs> Such fun, she's been having basking in the adoration of musty old bookworms and wide-eyed younglings, but does she spare a thought for me? Of course not. That sounds like Feowul. <laughs> I've waited and waited and waited, but she won't so much as acknowledge the presence of her beautiful branch, even though they're right here. Such a heartless thing our sapling is. Cold and cruel and heartless. You could literally come and visit me in the source whenever you want. Don't talk to me like that. <laughs> Oh, faithful Feowul, loveliest of branches, how I have missed you. If you truly missed me, you should have cried for me at the top of your lungs the instant you arrived. Make up for it, you will call me with twice the passion next time. Though for there to be a next time, you've some few struggles to overcome. So, my adorable sapling, the world's on the verge of destruction, is it? I mean, yeah, of course they know already. How do I know this? Joined as we are, spying on you is as simple as sliding down the back of a rainbow. Would that I could aid you in your quest, but the fate of we Fey folk is bound to that of the star. Whither it goes, so too do we follow. Such is our way. The most I could do for you is spare you the pain, by gifting you the sweetest of eternal dreams. But if escapes not to your liking, then you must struggle with your fellow mortals. Let's see. Ah, but here are the ones you were waiting for. I wonder what manner of conclusion awaits at Tales End. Hi! You could seriously come and say hi whenever you want. <laughs> ah, there she is! Kinda sad she doesn't have the gun blade. But still. My apologies for the delay. Carolyn, it's so wonderful to see you again. You doubtless have much catching up to do, so I shall leave you to it. I've taken the liberty of unlocking the umbilicus, and you may enter at your leave. Hi! I'm relieved to hear that everyone is well. I had this feeling like a pit in my stomach, and I was afraid that something might have happened. You know, it's a good point. Is like the closest person we have to like Hydalin and OG Minfilia, voice of the mother, is Reen. It's like our untapped resource right now. <laughs> anyway, maybe I'm overthinking things, but it's just that. I'm the Oracle of Light. I've never spoken with Hydaelyn. Never once heard her call. Even so, I've always had this feeling deep inside me. Connection to something immense. These past few days, though, that connection has wavered. As if that immense something was distant, then close, then distant. And then, the other night, I was jolted awake by the feeling it had been completely severed. Wanting some fresh air, I went to open the window. And to my horror, the sky was ablaze, like during the star shower. Oh, you're getting visions too, huh? 
Then I blinked, and everything was normal. The next day, no one said a thing. No one else had seen what I had seen. As far as I could tell, nothing was out of the ordinary. I began to wonder if it was a figment of a half-remembered dream. Carolyn, what are you not telling me? I have to know, please. It doesn't matter how terrible it is. Oh boy, well... Got a story. Let's go. It wasn't my imagination, then. The doom we witnessed in Amarat has come again. I can't believe it. Like I told you before, all is well here first, so don't worry about us. Please, look only to the threat before you. We're fine right now. Even if we weren't, we've learned how to survive. The final days reach us here as well. You may be assured we won't go quietly. No, we'll hold on until you can find a way to save all our worlds. So long as you continue your fight, so too will we, united in purpose beneath a blazing sky. Interesting quest name. You're headed to the Umbilicus to consult with Elidibus, right? I'll do some consulting of my own and speak with Lena, decide how we might best prepare for the final days. It's farewell for now, but we'll see each other again. I'm certain of it. Ooh. Okay. Is there a market board here? Someone just said, bro. <laughs> Ugh. But jeez, if this ain't steps, I didn't expect to be going up again. Okay. Ah, Mistress Carolyn, welcome back. The captain has told me all. Give the word and I will show you to the oculus. A little dusty. Dusty. Aww. Don't be- no. Don't the- It's been a hot minute since we've been in here. So now I've been doing the Allegan computer voice more or less correctly. Acknowledged. Reinitializing Sitka's tower systems. Searching for Elidibus entity. located in subterranean core power accumulator projecting image how you doing kiddo <laughs> my home my friends no more than a dream oh.
You. Why have you awakened me? I no longer sense those places beyond. All Lord Zodiac. You must explain all. Well, oof. Ah, uh, right. Hmm. So, about that. Turns out you did a terrible job of, uh, giving Fan Daniel's memories away. So, he has fallen, and my brethren's souls returned to the star. The doom we sacrificed so much to prevent is come again. Old burdens now yours to bear. But if this is Van Daniel's design, then I, as Elidibus, have a duty to fulfill. Your unsolicited act has restored to me some few memories of the Convocation. Such knowledge as I have, I will share. Genuinely surprised you want to talk, but cool. <clears throat> not apologizing. I, I do this not for you. I merely perform my duty, as I have ever done. Fair enough. Where to begin? Ah, the end. Your understanding of what caused the final days is consistent with our own. The decay first took root where the currents were weakest. Yes. A conclusion drawn by him. Fan Daniel. Staying. Not the him of here and now, but as I knew him. Long, long ago. Having shed light upon the phenomenon, he dedicated himself to devising a countermeasure. Were it not for his knowledge of the Celestial, we would never have made the connection, and thence forestalled the final days. Man, like OG Fan Daniel must be pissed off at Ammon then. Oh. <laughs> and though he inherited that noble soul, how different this last incarnation. So consumed by self-loathing and hate. Elpis. Yes. The name is familiar to me. Yet I know it not as a flower, but a place. Huh? A testing facility for determining which of our creations were fit to be released into the world. Many worked there. And before joining the convocation and assuming the title of Fan Daniel, he was their chief. He was Hermes. God, the amount of freaking layers you have to unpack with this asshole. Okay. So this explains a lot. Okay. Just, I, I'm just gonna roll with it. Okay, let's go. That is all I know. The crystals tell little of the lives the 14 led prior to their induction. Elpis itself would tell even less. An area ruin has survived. Oh. Wait. I saw you there. In Elpis. Hmm? No. I did not. But I did. I did. A lingering trace of impossibility and a truth that fills my heart. Mm -hmm. My 
My memories remain clouded, I fear. However, they have revealed to me one possible course. You must travel to Elpis, to the time when Hermes served as its chief. Oh! Okay. I see. It's all coming together now. I see. Where do you- where- oh. In glimpsing the Exarch's mm. memories, not only did I make his summoning magic mine own, I also mastered the workings of this tower. So you can use the tower to send me back in time, is what I'm hearing. Which, having absorbed my empowered essence, now harbors an abundance of energy. As such, mm. I believe I can deliver you unto the past. Mm. Unto that place and that precise moment. Cool, but like, can you get me back after is also an important question. What is the purpose of this, aside from like, us talking to him? <laughs> Given the eons that must be traversed, the gateway will not be fully formed. This explains the concept art for that one map. Ah. Oh. Well. Your form will be less tangible still than those warriors of light I had summoned. Okay, so I'm just looking at stuff. It's fine. In all likelihood, none will be able to see or hear you. Okay. Yet even should you manage to interact with others, you will be unable to affect meaningful change. For the reality you wish to save, the reality to which you must return, exists as a result of the final days. You cannot reshape the past to undo the tragedies of the present. Cannot unmake the sorrow and suffering fated to come. Basically, watch the sadness. In full knowledge of this, will you still entrust your life to your foe and make the journey? See, I, don't, I mean, I'm down for it, but I don't understand what we're hoping to accomplish with this. Like, sure, I'm down. But like, why? <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to go watch Very what he's well. doing? I shall cast you unto the river of time. Let this be my final act. Additional question, how am I getting back? Is it like a duration-based thing? You must input the commands. I no longer have the authority. First, you must reconfigure the systems, that the tower's ether may be channeled for the magic. Preparations are complete. The gateway will soon open. Return at once to the ocula. All appears to be in order. The ether flows unimpeded. The magic should consume every last mote of my essence. Why are you surprised? Did I not say that this will be my final act? Lord Zodiac is no more. There is nothing for me here. The ones I love and long to see again are waiting in that promised land beyond memory. And dream. Now go, warrior of light. Go and do not look back. I still have a lot of questions, but like, okay, we're just gonna roll with this. Well, Hydaelyn, 
I take my leave of you. Yours is the mantle of the last light. May you have the joy of it, the burden and the solitude. It falls to you now. You and your champion to save our star. So like, surely we'll be able to actually interact with stuff, right? This is like an actual map, right? Like, don't answer that. I'll see how it works, but I'm confused. Another nice throwback to Shadowbringers here. Whose face shall we see in these crystals? No? This does explain the shots we kept seeing of, like, Amaratines with, like, actual fame in the launch trailer. I thought that some of them had survived in a place that we wouldn't have been able to detect them. But this works too, I guess. We a ghost. So yeah, this is definitely not Amarot. You can like it's got the same architecture, but the colors are all different. Etherite like device. Guide like man. But yeah, this is all like brown and like warm colors instead of cool. Ready? Can I use it? Oh. We cannot attune with the etherite. Well, heck. Okay. Man stands dutifully by the etherite-like device, a guide for this facility in all likelihood. We attempt to get the man's attention, but if he sees or hears you, he gives absolutely no indication. It's Elidibus warned, it appears your form is intangible. is the right place yet. Yes? Drop now. Oh god. Drop a lion? Judging by the woman's words, this facility is called Drop a lion. Yeah, that's sure. Whatever you want to say it. I'm sure I said that wrong. The attempt to gently prod the woman to attract her attention, but feel nothing, and it seems neither does she. like snooping and looking at everybody. Black robed men. The remarkably large man wears a black robe and a half mask, much like the phantoms you encountered in Mari Lamentorum and the recreated Emerald. The team you have made it to your destination. gesticulate wildly and shout all manner of greetings and obscenities, but the man does not so much as glance in your general direction. Uh, 
There's some more people over here. I'm looking for faces I recognize. That one caught my attention. But the other ones just seem to be scaled up. Cannot use the etherite. Examine the door. Can I like phase through it since I'm like a ghost? Suspect this door leads outside, but how to open it? Can I just like walk through it? Surely, I'm a ghost. So let me just walk through the door. And here we are, Elpis. Hmm. Well, well. How rare to receive you in person. To what do we owe the honor? Hmm. Oh, just a few odd tasks. We'll be here a while. Hmm. You're welcome to stay as long as you see fit, of course. As a matter of procedure, however, I must ask that you kindly remove your masks. You're literally wearing your own mask, jerk. It's procedure, take it off. Follow your own rules. Come now. Is this truly necessary? Ah. Surely you can tell who we are. Hmm? Who you are, perhaps. But I am far less infamous. Regardless, if we do not follow protocols, it is our hosts who would be held accountable. So, please, do favor us with your handsome face. Looks like freaking. <laughs> he looks like Samus. <laughs> if anyone would be able to see me half invisible, it would be him. Though he would probably have no idea who or what I am. Satisfied. I would like to take a moment before we proceed any further and just say that I see a lot of people in the fandom making comics about Amorati- like Amorot times with these two and Zem and they got it right. <laughs> that is- just from that tiny exchange that is like exactly what the fandom like zeroed in on and also the side pony Hythlodeus I like how he just has side pony energy. We just knew. We knew. I thank you for your cooperation. You are free to go about your business. Well, now we know who we're following. Uh, I hope you can freaking run because they're very big. By the by, you see it too, yes? They can both see me. I haven't the foggiest what you're talking about. Liar. Hmm. That's odd. They're... It's right here. A bit thin in the ether, but there's no mistaking it. The color of its soul is almost identical to Azem's. Ew, is that how you say it? Don't like that. Do you suppose she created it? Rather unusual for a familiar to have a soul, though. Don't ask me. All I know is that it's trouble. Doubly so if it's her spitting image. So let's leave it be. Come now. <laughs> hmm. I don't know if they can hear us. Hmm. It's trying to say something, but it's literally too intangible to form words. Why don't you give it some ether? Spare a snifter of your bounteous reserves. Who do you take me for? This is just really good. This Why, is really good. Dear friend, of course. Uh, 
One who wouldn't let acts of kindness, such as my accompanying him on errands to far-flung outposts, go unrewarded? It's exactly the right personality. I'm so happy. <laughs> <sighs> this is perfect. I'm so happy. <laughs> I suggest you close your eyes, or this may be unpleasant. Are we now able to interact with things? You may open your eyes. Are we big or are we still small? We are still small. Oh wait, no we're not. I mean still small compared to them, but like not oh, itty bitty. even adjusted its size. The better to indulge your whim. This way it will be easier to communicate. How very thoughtful of you. And may I applaud your artful reinforcement. Without further ado, then. Greetings. I am Hithlidaeus, chief of the Bureau of the Architect. That's how you say it. Okay. Sulking beside me is the most honorable Emmet Selk of the Convocation of Fourteen. And how might we address you, my new friend? A fine name. And I'm pleased to see you understand our words. So, tell us, whence have you come? The thinness of your essence suggests you weren't created here. Oh boy. Well... You do not know? Or cannot say? Hmm. Allow me to ask a different question, then. What brings you here? I mean, yeah, it's less about- I don't particularly care about Hermes. I want to know about the location. I want to know about Elvis. Well now, the same as us. Perhaps Azim wished to come too, but had to settle for a familiar. If she truly wished to be here, then she would be. Right you are. My apologies if we've given offense. The two of us can discern the color of souls, you see, and yours happens to resemble that of a friend. Mm-hmm. And with your purpose matching our own besides, we jumped to a hasty conclusion. Mm. We are here to speak with Hermes, the chief overseer of this facility, which we also intend to tour in order to gain greater insight into the man's work. We, I say, Though this is Emmett Selk's charge. I am here only to serve as his guide. And I should be happy to serve as yours as well. By way of an apology for the misunderstanding. Wait. Are you suggesting that we bring it along on official business? This thing we know next to nothing about? If you harbor suspicions, better to keep it close than leave it to its own devices. Wouldn't you agree? Hi, Kate. <laughs> oh, me, I want to see. Besides, having a mysterious life form in tow is the norm rather than the exception here. Oh, me. I want to see what it looks like. Welcome, my friends, to the testing ground of creation at Heaven's Edge, Elpis. Ooh, it's very foggy. I can't see anything. But this is gorgeous. Oh my god. It'd be great if it wasn't foggy and I could actually see. <laughs> Argo! Hobby! <laughs> 
Oh, hey. I'm assuming that's this her. presence. Vena. Babies! Oh, this is where you took the picture, Kate. <gasps> She's got wings! Maybe Hermes. not. Hermes! Visitors! We have visitors! Hello? And like. A feather tail? What? That's so cute! Oh my god! What secrets are you hiding, I wonder? I really wish this wasn't foggy. <laughs> I want to see. I want to see far. Oh my god. It feels weird being normal sized in like Amarant structures. This feels illegal that I'm not like half the height of this plant thing or less. God. Ah, okay. Fine. It might, yeah, it, it feels like it's intentionally obscured, like how the Tempest was. I wish I could see farther because it feels like it would be really pretty with like a bright blue sky, like churning mist style. Anyway. It's hardly my first time here, but the scenery never fails to take my breath away. Why, it feels as if you could reach out and touch the heavens. Now then, to begin our guided tour, perhaps you already know these things, but for the sake of thoroughness, I shall start with the basics. Using concepts to give shape to ether, creation magics allow us to bring forth anything we desire, be it inanimate objects or living beings. Anyone may conceive of concepts, but they all must undergo evaluation at the Bureau of the Architect. As part of that process, living beings and certain arcane entities may be sent here to Elpis for in-depth observation and study. It is a fascinating facility, isn't it? I dare say you will enjoy touring it with us. Ah. Uh... In case you didn't know it's rude to stare. I'm sorry. Eh? Now then, our friend Hermes. Aside from overseeing the facility, he also conducts his own research. Chances are he will be at the main observation hub, so let us seek him out there first. Attired as you are, however, you stand out a little too much. Our dear Emmett Selk wishes to keep a low profile for his errand, so... Do you know how to make a robe? Basic concept will do. God, are they finally gonna give us the freaking robe so we got denied an Amarat? <sighs> no, in that case, Emmett Selk. No. Your whim, your responsibility. You're not getting another thimble of ether out of me. <sighs> the way he scrimps sometimes, you'd think he wasn't an eye bottomless font of magic. Very well, I shall make the robe, but perhaps you can assist. Come, oh, let us search for the requisite material. Finally! We're finally getting the rope! Is this like a door that opens? Can I attune to this now or no? No? Okay. Are there ether currents here? Yes! <laughs> okay. Whoa! This is what I was talking about. Much better. It's very pink. Well, it's because the sun is starting to set. This is what I wanted to see! This is so much better! Look at this view! It's beautiful. Okay, moving on. Unfortunately, for people that want me to get on with it, I'm gonna treat this the same way I treated Amarot, aka grinding to a full stop. We're talking to everyone. We're doing everything. I want to know what's going on. As researchers are from Academia and Eider's Words of Helmarud, here to observe the state of the local flora, I wish they would give equal attention to the ambient environment, specifically how much noise they are adding to it with their little debate.
God, this is so pretty. <sighs> so pretty. <laughs> No means no, just be grateful I'm even willing to wait. Yes, these creatures should suffice. An etheric rope. I want you to use it to capture, shall we say, two petaludi. There are three species here, I believe. Any two different kinds should serve. Now, I should mention that the strength of the rope is tied, no pun intended, to the strength of its user. As your ether is still thin compared to ours, you'll need to weaken the petaludi first. Good luck. I see blue, I see purple, I see red. I don't think it matters. I want a red one. crap is on the ground here like this is so many like flowers and little shrub grass things it's the petaludi? Come, come, let us see. Yes, these fine fellows would do nicely. Now for a spot of reversion. Finally getting the robes. Finally. Finally! There, it's ready. Nothing fancy, but then we're trying not to stand out. Try it on for size. Someone be angry with us for using those creatures? I mean, I know they dissolve living things down to, like, build stuff. Like, they do that with their own bodies. That's not really that hard to... Anyway! Oh, it's fine. There's no one around to tell us off. And besides, we can always make more petaludi. They need only a tiny amount of ether. It may take some effort to get the form and composition right, but anyone familiar with the concept should be able to make it. Well and good to disguise and educate it, but it won't fool anyone who can see worth a damn. Fair point, but at the very least it should spare you unwanted attention from casual observers. Emmett Selk speaks true. Even dressed like us, your unusual nature will be plain to those who think Someone question your presence, don't make up excuses, much less try to explain what you actually are. No, best to simply say that you're a familiar. The question is whose? Ah, of course, a Zems. If you say you belong to her, people will give you the benefit of the doubt for any and all outlandish behavior. I mean, it's also kind of right, technically, I guess we'll say, so. Exploiting our associate's absence. For lack of her presence, absolutely. Were she here, she'd have been the first to propose the idea. You know it. Uh, it's just very on brand. I'm very happy. Anyway, with that, your story is settled. Let us continue with our errand. Look at that! Finally! 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 It's been two years! Oh my god. Okay. As dubious as it is, passing you off as a Zem's familiar is probably the best approach. Should she take offense that others so readily believe her recklessness is to blame, she's welcome to mend her ways. Pass as a child in your original size? I think not. Augmented or no, your ether is still far too thin to be considered normal. 
In search of Hermes. If you are ready, let us continue along the path to Anagnur. The place serves as an observation hub and residence both. Someone there should be able to point us in the direction of Hermes. I want to put the stuff on. Um, let me, I gotta get in character. Give me a second. Hide my weapon. And off my. Give me, give me a second. Hold on. Cast glamour. So happy. <laughs> Pop. Give it a second. I'm lagging. There we go. Hide the weapon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what do the pants look like? Oh, they're ugly. Oh well. I can't see my pants anyway. Oh, those shoes are cute though. I could use those shoes or something. <laughs> Does this have like a visor toggle? It'd be cool if it had a visor toggle that like popped up the hood. Excited. Great. I'm gonna keep my pants and my shoes on like normal, but we're gonna look like this. We're dressed the part. We RP and go. Oh. Yeah, that's not happening. That's a cliff. Get over there. Really. It's so pretty! Ah! I could get on him. I see a pony. Hold on. There's a pony. It's hostile. Hold on. I'm gonna leave the pony alone. <laughs> Three hundred and forty-five to the west. We are absolutely disrespecting the MSQ right now because I am screwing off over here. I really want the EX mounts to be those fluffy mods, but like butterflies would be nice. It's nighttime and there's still like there's no stars. It's just clouds. Oh! Oh, that's not a tree. That's a creature. Huh. I'm not gonna touch that right now. 81 to the- ah, there it is. There are three etherites. We're gonna mosey back because there is an etherite in the middle, and I should probably get that. name. Lost my familiar friend, and Ignoresis is not the safest place to wander unattended. They best return to your master's side. This one's just chillin'. He's just having a little bath. So cute. There's a goo boo over here. Look at it go! <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop jumping in the fountain. <laughs> ah! 
Look, this guy gets it. This guy gets it. Yeah! That's a player. You did the same thing I did. Good to know I'm not alone. Oh, this one's have Oh, there's a crab! There's a crab in here, too. Adorable. Okay, we're getting there. Alias? This guy too, nice. Look at all these people have the same idea. I'm very happy. Content respectors. Content respecters. Wondering what she was examining, but it seems to be the bush itself. Let's see if this observer knows her music's whereabouts. Yes? Can I help you? I wish to speak with Chief Hermes. Do you know where we might find him? Well now, by your mask, I assume you are one of the fourteen. I wasn't aware there was to be a visitation. Between you and us, it's something of a surprise. Your discretion in the matter would be appreciated. I see, I see. My lips are sealed. The Chief should be out conducting observations as usual. His focus of late has been aquatic creatures, so I expect we will find him at one of the pools here. Well, I already looked and I didn't see him, so... <laughs> the pools, you say? Many thanks, and apologies for disrupting your work. Say, Hypodatus, while I've never met Hermes, you know him well, do you not? That being the case, couldn't you simply find him by his ether? Aye, that I could. As you know, Emmett Selk and I can discern the color of souls. By the same token, we can also see ether quite keenly, and from great distances. With this skill, I could readily locate Hermes, but I felt like it would be a waste of an opportunity. We're here to perform an assessment, after all. By searching the ordinary way, we stand to gain insight into Elpis and the man in charge of it. This is as much for your own enjoyment, like as not. The point taken. If you're going to accompany us, make yourself useful and help us look for Hermes. According to his profile, he has short, dark hair. That's like the least helpful thing you could tell me, but okay. So you know, it's because we're in Elpis that we don't have our cowls up. A special exemption do need to be aware of dangerous creatures. Elsewhere, we do not exhibit our individuality. It's unseemly. It's all common sense, but I would assume- <laughs> I would not assume you possess any. <laughs> It's a rare treat indeed to be able to search for someone by their appearance, and I thank you for humoring me. Come, let's find our man. You know, if you need- if- if you're actively admitting that having the hood up obscures your vision to the point where you are unaware of potential threats, maybe you should have come up with a concept that didn't have a hood. <laughs> Honestly. Uh, okay. I've gone and shoved my nose into most of these places already. Person here petting a pony. My, what a curious familiar. I suppose your creator sent you here to learn our ways, and perhaps achieve some degree of enlightenment. So, what would you ask of me? Ooh hoo hoo! You're just the standard NPC. Absolutely. Tell me about yourself. Like most of my colleagues here at Anagnesis, I am charged with observing the various creations in our care and assessing their suitability for life on Aetherius. It's an enormous responsibility, of course, though the sense of achievement from bringing new species into the world makes it all worthwhile. Anagnesis is one of the most important facilities in Elpis, as it is here that we ascertain the various merits and shortcomings of the various flora and fauna in our care. Derives its name from the ethos at the center of our work, that being the discovery of the creation's true nature. Only by allowing them to coexist in an environment such as this do they reveal unto us the essence of their being. going insane or is there not an etherite? It says there's an etherite but I don't see it. Is it up? Is it down? Are we up? need to be underground? Okay. 
Kelpie over here. Hello. I'm not reading all of them, but I am talking to as many as I can see. Spriggans. They are very cute. This, whatever this, it's very cute. Very, very cute. die for this little baby bird. Wait, please, wait. He's immediately very cute. Very excited, take a deep breath. Greetings press. and salutations. Can you hear me? And she's telepathic. Okay. Do not be alarmed. I mean you no harm. I wish only to hear your words, share your feelings, and know your thoughts. Okay. May we please be friends? Sure. <laughs> May we please be friends? Ah, I see. Adorable. Yes, absolutely. 100%. Ah, I see you found him. I've known you for like 30 seconds and I would already die for you. You're adorable. It's Ladeus. It's been a while. Too long, I think. Too long indeed for close collaborators. On this blessed occasion, I bring not only myself, but others who long to speak with you. You are of the Convocation. Emmet Selk at your service. Do I have the honor of addressing Hermes, Chief Overseer of Elpis? You do. You have traveled far for it. Given your facility's purpose, its remote location is something of a necessity. Would that I didn't have to rely upon a guide. Oh, you wound me. Have I not ever been an attentive and helpful friend? Uh... But moving along to more agreeable company, this one we chance to... Very cute. Well, you certainly have her attention. Is she one of yours, Hermes? Her name is Meteon. It means shooting star. Hmm. If I may make an observation, her ether is terribly thin. I fear she might dissipate at any moment. Nor do I believe you've made a submission to the Bureau. I would remember such a concept if you had. I haven't, as you say. I judged it too early. She's a pet project of mine, still undergoing preliminary testing. But rest assured that I will attend in person ere long. Very well. Being an authority on flying life forms, I appreciate that you are exacting in your work. I shall look forward to your submission. 
If we have finished with the perfunctory chit-chat, I would discuss official matters. By my coming, I trust you already anticipate the subject. I have an inkling, yes. Please wait to the main building yonder. I shall join you as soon as I've returned these creatures to their homes. What's wrong, Hermes? The Nemostoma is missing. Hmm. I may have found it. A creature with the self-same ether as those there, nestled in the boughs of a tree outside the grounds. Ow! You're saying they can climb with their sorry excuses for limbs? Ah, oh, don't insult them! They're so cute! <laughs> the fashion has been to imbue aquatic creatures with the power of flight. Ever since the words of Mitron created a sky swimming fish. Oh god. Right. Frick. To just justify the fact that a lot of different minions kind of float in the air behind you, because if I remember correctly, the Axolotl minion does indeed float in the air behind you. The Ambistomas too can fly, if only slightly. And they could conceivably climb a tree. Whether they can come down safely, however. Excuse me. God. Of all the weird things to justify. I'll help. Two. So cute. Oh my goodness. And what are we supposed to do with this lot? Probably just sleep. <laughs> May I suggest we split up? If you would be so good as to assist Hermes, Emmett Selk and I shall keep an eye on these adorable creations in the meantime. Ah, I see more people have taken the correct decision. 109 to the north. Yeah, we'll deal with it. I have a. kind of floats? It's kind of hard to tell. I'm on a bumpy surface. I find some flat ground. It just ever so slightly floats. See? <laughs> That's so funny. Okay, anyway. Hermes and Mediana found their quarry, a creature known in this age as Stoma. Though it has been safely extricated from the tree, Hermes appears to find himself in quite the predicament. How so? Oh! I see! I didn't realize he was hanging from the tree! The Ambistoma. Hermes saw it high up the tree. He climbed up to get it. 
but it jumped on him and he slipped. You need a hand? No, no, I'm fine, if a little embarrassed. Now, for your own safety, please stand back. You just flop out of the tree. Mood. Please, are you all right? Quite all right. Yes. My apologies for making you worry me. Both you and er. Carolyn Ka, you are called. An intriguing name, somehow reminiscent of a new creation. Thank you for coming after me. Huh? As for you, little one, you must be more careful. You just kind of wiggle. He's so cute. You may be able to fly, but that doesn't mean you cannot fall and hurt yourself. Oh no, I had forgotten all about its fellows. They're fine, they're fine, they're being watched. Don't worry about it, calm down. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> Truly, what a relief. I must thank Emmett Silk and Hyphladeus when I return to them. First, with the distractions out of the way. As Chief Overseer of Elpis, permit me to welcome you to our facility. Hope you will enjoy your time here. There are actually stars in the sky, it's just they're hard to see. Glad they're safe. Hermes and Emberstone. Oh, we mustn't keep the others waiting. Let us return to Anagrasis. It's a fate! We're gonna go do the fate. Hey, okay, wait. You looking at the bunnies? Can't talk to you. Maybe I can.
tool tip for um, progress on this as well. But it's fine. I'm assuming there must be an underground section. Oh wait, no, 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 hold on. I'm just blind apparently. How did I not see this? I guess I wasn't far enough forwards? I apparently just didn't walk far enough forwards. I'm just dumb. Okay. Moving on. Some creations stay outside, others stay at gates, like the Ambistovas. More errant creations distract us from matters of actual import, I trust. Most blissfully uneventful in your absence. Little ones were on their best behavior. My apologies for the trouble. Owing to your kind assistance, all the Ambistomas are safe and well. Presently send them back to their space if you go on ahead to the main building. On entering, you will see a table and chairs, a meeting area. Speak Very well. Take care not to let the creatures slip away. Top of the building. In the building. 69. Nice. Uh hi, hi, sorry, don't don't mind me, just shoving my nose into all your buildings. Don't worry about it. Ah, 
others. Thunderstroke. Ixion? Okay. Many Ixions, no less. Bird of Kara. Paranoid. Attempting to bring thunder clouds to Elpis in the sky, threatening to destabilize the weapon. Eat the Thunderhead, Karanoi, and ensure there are no untoward meteorological distortions. You know, just a freaking herd of Ixions. No problem. For those not aware, Ixion is the equivalent to Odin for Stormblood. Kind of. Closest comparison. It's one of those things. They're from Baja. Probably other places. 290 some to the west. Uh, there's something weird over there, but... That's just like a small space. And a sneak over. I don't care. What is it? There an ether current here? What happens if you try and jump off here? Eh. Ah, fair enough. I guess it's above me, so... God, it's so pretty! Look at the sky colors! Ah! So I used to take a ton of pictures with Sorkai as a backdrop because the sky was really pretty, but I think this might be my new favorite skybox to take pictures with. It was very pretty. This appears to be the place. 
And here is where we part ways. We will be discussing highly sensitive affairs. Only a select few may be privy to such knowledge, and that does not include someone who cannot or will not divulge their origins. What? Will I have to remove you by force? Hmm. Hmm. I have important things to say to him as well. We're not going to start fighting yet. Yes. I'm sure your business with Hermes is quite pressing. You may speak with him to your heart's content after ours is concluded. I do not object to her attendance. Hermes, this is highly irregular. Perhaps, but I believe she can be trusted. Meteon would not have taken to her so quickly otherwise. Moreover, the presence of a third party may help me to maintain composure. As you wish, then. Behave yourself, do you hear? Fine. So, it's finally happened, then. I, Van Daniel has declared his intention to step down and named you as his preferred successor. In recognition of your knowledge and your works, the convocation is giving the recommendation due consideration. As one who does not know you personally, I am to use my impartial eye to take your measure. And above all else, to ascertain your disposition towards the invitation. I understand that you and Van Daniel are close. He himself was once chief overseer of Elpis, after all. I should not be surprised if you knew before anyone else that he wished to relinquish his office. I did. He told me that when he fulfilled his purpose, he wished to pass the torch to me. A torch you seem none too pleased to accept. Are you so averse to serving on the convocation? No, it's not that. For a humble researcher like myself to even be considered is an honor beyond words. No. What troubles me, what I struggle to come to terms with, is the very fact that Van Daniel is stepping down. Does this not mean that he will return to the star? Of his own volition, yes. Like so many others have before him. Return to the star? Does that mean... die? Well now... That's not a word I hear often. Is that what you say here in Elpis? Mankind is the life of a Theris. Each of us, a drop of blood flowing through its veins, bearing sustenance. Hmm. Ain't those some fun words I heard earlier? Anyway. In our finite time upon it, tis our duty to make it a better place that all who call it home, now and in future, may abide in happiness. To that end, we have dedicated ourselves to the pursuit of enlightened creation. And by our efforts did we transform this once untamed wilderness into the peaceful paradise you enjoy today. To return to the star whence we came is a privilege afforded to we who have so loved and nurtured it a choice embraced by those who have lived their lives to the fullest, 
in service to our world. And when they depart upon this journey, it is beautiful, always. The fourteen are no exception. Tis believed no occasion is more felicitous than the fulfillment of one's duty. Our office becomes our lives, and to retire is to return, or so the majority of us hold. Some few have elected to eschew custom. Mayhap you feel Van Daniel's deeds do not warrant his return. Yet you should know his accomplishments as well as any. During his time, he conceived of countless outstanding concepts. And channeling the wealth of experience he attained here in Elpis, he brought forth many new specimens. I know of all this. I do. It's just... I cannot fathom why someone so great and wise, who could still do so much good, we want to end it all. Oh no, I've made her upset. Forgive me, I know I requested your presence. Might I trouble you to take me to an outside? A change of scenery would do her good. off my visuals from a little swoopy swoop. Would jump at the chance to serve in the Convocate. It's my fen. Medium. I feel like you're missing the point. It's not that he doesn't want to serve on the Convocation. It's that his friend is dying. His mentor. Like, bruh. Ugh. Sorry, Carolyn, I didn't want- didn't mean a walk. Perhaps we can go for a walk? Oh. You walk towards that door! Okay, anyway. Hello. Bad little herb. Hermes gets sad when he thinks about death. When others are sad, I'm sad too. That's how I am. How he made me. But don't worry, I'm fine now. So, why did you come here? You want to learn about Elpis and Hermes? Ooh, ooh, teach you. I can teach you. We could take turns. I tell you something, then you tell me something. Sounds like fun! He's so cute. It will be, it will be. Um, where to start? Ah yes, let's talk to Memnon. He should be near the Aetherite. I'm not good at explaining, but Memnon is, so I'll have him explain instead. Okay. So cute. So cute. Yeah, she's following. Adorable. So cute. Look at how wiggly her tail is! Ah, it's so cute! So I'm wondering if Medion here has something to do with the flower. Because the flower, like, picks up people's emotions and stuff. I mean, clearly she will, but I don't know what exactly it'll be yet. Talking about the Aetherite. Ah, the Aetherite. Anyone can use it to teleport anywhere. Well, maybe not anywhere. Not the ground. Or other isles. For that, you need teleporters. Oh, and permission. I would like... Pretty tuned to the sea thread already, right? Yeah, okay. Hello, Memnon. What have we here? Though you look like a person, you have the horns and scales of a beast. Assume you are a familiar, like Medion. That's race specific. I'd love to know what is said for other races. Aside from obvious. Is there something you need? 
This is Carolyn. Could you teach her about Elpis? Ah, a newly arrived familiar, is she? Very well, I should be glad to introduce our fair facility to her. As you know, it is mankind's duty to make the star a better place. As part of this duty, we employ creation magics to bring forth new life. However, we cannot simply release our works into the world, for it would lead to chaos. No, any and all life forms must undergo extensive testing to determine their fitness to exist. Testing which is conducted here, in Elpis. Every candidate is subjected to rigorous study, in which we identify their properties, minus what habitats might be suitable. Speculate as to the effects they may have on the environments and species. Should it be judged a beneficial addition to the star, it will be allowed to take its place in the world. The two of you, too, were created with the hope of making the star a better place. So heed your masters well and be good, do you hear? We will, Memnon, we will. Thanks for the lesson. You had a turn. Now I get a turn. Where did you come from? From the Crystarium, I guess. Um. Hmm. Place far, far away. Hmm, then I probably don't know it. I don't know much about other places. But this place is important. I can feel it. Oh, my power. I haven't told you about it. A creation. Let's find a creation. One not being watched. Then I'll explain the power. Uh. Motion bird. See what kind of bird that is? Hello. How you doing? Well, I want to see what she says about the spriggans. Spriggans? What are spriggans? Oh no, we call them Oriae. There's many, if it's just one, we say Oriae's. They're cute, they can be naughty. Sometimes they run off with concept crystals, and Hermes has to run after them. So cute. Bird. Oh, this creation is perfect. But I don't remember seeing it before. Perhaps it's new? Ah, suspicious. Anyway, I'll try reading its mind. It's my power. Huh? It's probably thinking about, like, rhymes. No thoughts. Head empty. can't read it. Or maybe there's nothing to read? Wait, please wait. I'll try again. With you this time. Huh? Greetings. Can you hear me? This is my power. I can read the emotions of those around me and project my emotions to others in return. I am not actually speaking to you in your mind. Rather, you are converting my emotion into words and intention, a process performed subconsciously by intelligent life forms. This ability is vital to my mission, for it allows me to interact with intelligent beings even should they communicate via unknown languages or other nonverbal means. As a consequence, I am clumsy at speaking. Yet though I struggle to express myself in this fashion, Hermes wants me to speak as much as possible, for everyone has thoughts and feelings that they may wish to hide. I harbor an affection for you, one that is difficult to define. Aside from the fact that you share common traits with us, our thoughts are complex, prismatic, draw me in and leave me wanting to know more. Out of respect for your privacy, I will refrain from using my power when speaking with you. Nevertheless, I want you to know that I wish to be your friend. Oh, he's so cute! Also, does that not sound like a section of the Echo? Being able to understand people no matter what language they're speaking? It's a little suspicious. 
Did you hear me? Okay, good. Now it's my turn again. So, what are you good at? Uh, it's a secret. Fighting. <laughs> uh, crafting, gathering, playing. It's just... Fighting. What are we boop boop a dooping about? You have cursed the computer. Actually, maybe it's fine. Okay, we're good. Never mind. <laughs> oh, fighting! That must mean you're strong. Hermes is strong too, but he doesn't like to fight, even when creations fight him. Bird is now looking at us. Can I help you? Hello? I think we might be bothering it. Let's keep going. We'll go and see next. It's usually in a small building. One on the west row. the door. How about this one? Oh, if there's lights on, they open. Okay. Hello! Well, well, if it isn't Medion, I see you brought a friend today. Greetings, Yuan. Um, an apple. Could you make me an apple? Find Hermes likes, covered in syrup. I want to share it with Carolyn. Was it candy apple? Aww! Oh, candied apple? Hermes is certainly partial to them, but you know you can't eat, Medion. You weren't made to do so. But, but I like it too. It may seem that way, but it's due to your ability to share others' feelings. You've taken Hermes' likes for your own. In any case, I can't prepare an apple right now, but I'll bring one for Hermes soon. I promise. I'm sorry, Carolyn. I wanted to show you my favorite thing, then I could ask about yours, but I failed. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna tell her. Yeah, yeah, I don't. Here you go. I don't know what I'm telling you, but. Oh, that's what you like? Yes, yes, I can feel it. Your joy and happiness. And it makes me happy, too. Thanks for sharing it with me, Carolyn. Well, we've walked and talked a lot. Maybe Hermes has finished talking, too. Shall we go and see? Absolutely, you are so cute. Oh my god. Something bad is gonna happen to her. But she's very cute. And I can't think anybody nice or like cute or nice and cute. Bad things. Bad things are gonna happen. I mean, bad things are gonna happen regardless because this is in the past before the final days. So like, no matter what, bad things are gonna happen. But still, ah, excellent timing. To refreshing constitutional. I hope. What back already? Pity. A bit longer, we might have snuck away without you. There you are. I could see the fresh air has done Medion good. Carolyn wanted to learn about you and Elpis, so I taught her. About this place, about my power, about your favorite food. Not sure if that last one will be of any use. But I do appreciate you keeping Medion company. While you were away, I finished speaking with our guests. Finished? Hardly. Requested time to consider the invitation, so we have no choice but to occupy ourselves with an inspection of the work. My apologies. It has been decided that Emmet Selk and Hyphladeus will accompany me as I attend to my duties. If you wish to learn more, perhaps you would like to come too? I'll to remind you that she is in no way associated with the convocation. Simply chance to meet at Probalean. There's no guarantee that the matters we discuss will remain private. I do not mind. To see the joy her presence brings Medion, I cannot imagine our mysterious friend harbors malicious intent. Carolyn is kind. Really, truly, she taught me as much as I taught her. You're coming, of course, to watch Hermes. You're bound to learn lots and lots.
And before I pick this up, give me just a Okay, we're back. So I see new creations on a daily basis. Here they look at them with a different eye. It will be interesting to observe Hermes at work. It is held that all civil organizations should conduct their affairs with total transparency, and the Convocation is no exception. That doesn't mean we are obligated to show our work to unknown entities such as you. Consider yourself privileged and behave accordingly. It's time we all get to go for a walk. Isn't it exciting? Ah, she's so cute! If everyone is ready, there are a few creations I need to check on. First, we shall return to the spot where we found our wayward Ambistoma. Of care when you step outside a hub, for there may be more unruly creatures about. Like how it like cracks, but it doesn't tell me. 447 to Okay. Ah yes, the Ianthine Petaluga, one of the newest species of the ever-popular butterfly. Hmm? You still bothered about your robe? Don't be. A few specimens we released won't be made. So beautiful, Petaluga. I hope they make it into the world. All of him in vigor now. When we were discussing yeah. his nomination, he was melancholy incarnate. This year is a new species of Petaluda we recently set loose. It has been doing very well, managing to maintain a stable existence thus far. If it can see its observation period to the end without issue, we shall release it unto the world. Tell me, do you know the difference between living beings and arcane entities? No. It is the presence of a soul, yet the soul isn't something you can choose to have at will. No, it manifests only in those beings whose forms adhere to the laws of creation, that can endure on their own. Beings that do not fulfill this requirement, such as those spontaneously born of magic or a natural phenomenon, do not have souls. I feel like we're acquiring important information here. No matter how much it might resemble flora or fauna, if it lacks a soul, then it is considered an arcane entity. So you see, it is not for mankind to decide what is living. That domain lies beyond our manipulation, and it's hubris to assume otherwise. Come, let us head to the nearby beacon. I received a report that arcane entities have gathered there. Fascinating creation, much like yourself, little one. For known as Hermes is for his flying life forms, it's a rare privilege to be able to see one of his works in progress. 
meant to be observing Hermes, but instead were stuck with Medion. Well, I suppose she herself serves as proof of his prowess as a researcher, or both. Interesting, you're interesting too. Tell me, how did you find the Ambistoma? Ah yes, Lightning Numa, just as the report said. Although we call this structure a beacon due to its form, it's in fact a magical device. By manipulating the balance of elements, it keeps the isle airborne and maintains the climate thereupon. In the course of its operation, it often sees an internal shift towards a given element. Right now, the element is lightning, which draws the Numa here to replenish their ether. Hmm. Here's Medion is busy. Would you care to assist me in her stead and feed the Numa? By using this lightning converger, you can harness ambient lightning and focus it into a ball, a veritable feast for our dazzling friends. Go on, give it a try. Perfectly done, Carolyn. Look. See how they gather to feed. How they express themselves through their actions, despite their lack of words. Speech is not the sole defining characteristic of a thinking, feeling creature, nor is silence an indication that they do not possess these qualities. Yet a soulless arcane entity such as the Numa, or an ephemeral life form such as the Petaluda, all seek to perpetuate their existence, to survive. Is Medion an arcane entity? Does this unit have a soul? A good question. I can answer it from a theoretical standpoint, but ult it ultimately falls to the Bureau of the Architect to pass judgment. Those with exceptional visions, such as Hythlodeus, may be able to ascertain her true nature. But to me, it doesn't matter. She is herself. That is all I need to know. Oh, you finished already? I'm sorry, I was in the way. Not to worry, my dear. They miss nothing of note, and we still have plenty of work for them to observe. Next, we will head east to the Morning Dew. I need to speak with some observers there. Etherite somewhere here. Or ether freaking ether current, that's the word. Sappho! Hey! How you doing? <laughs>
adorable, but beware the sneeze. Hermes went flying once. Ah, this fellow has been the talk of the Bureau. The combination of a carefree aspect and endless rows of fangs is strangely charming. Is there a guiding theme or any method to the madness that is this random assortment of features? <laughs> yeah, he's cute. <laughs> he's a gooboo. <laughs> Leave him alone. <laughs> Amazing, is it not? The Ampelos, one of our newest subjects. So, how are we coming along? Hey, there they are. Like probably trying to say they about product developers, and so named for their birthplace. They're referring to how they like respond to emotions. A happy accident, born of the hands of a former researcher who loved beautiful blossoms. Unique for how they change color to reflect the emotional state of those nearby. Though be it here or elsewhere, they are seldom seen in any hue save purest white. Reflect the emotional state, you say? By what means do they achieve this? In creation, there exists an energy wholly apart from ether, one driven by emotions. Mm -hmm. In like manner to how we manipulate ether, this flower is subject to the influence of said energy. While it has no will of its own, it is sensitive to the prevailing emotion in the vicinity and reacts by altering its color and vibrancy. Akasha? It is one of the unseen energies defined by Hanish alchemical theory. Though a gross oversimplification, some describe it as an essence influenced by feeling. Yeah, okay, so we were spot on with that. But, like, we still need to know, like, what, what it means. <laughs> What's the point? Akasha, though I'm not familiar with the term, your description suggests it is the self-same energy. Dynamis, we call it. It! Like the lost action? Dynamis dies? <laughs> and those entities, like the Elpis Flower, that have the ability to interact with this energy, converting emotions into tangible phenomena, are Antelekis. That's me! That's me! An Antelekki! Hmm. Receiving a lot of revelations are, here. And no ordinary one at that, but the first possessed of free will. Wait, a form of energy other than ether? Dynamis? I've never heard of such a thing. Hardly surprising. Dynamis cannot be seen, much less felt. And though its existence has long been theorized, we had no proof until the flower's serendipitous creation. What's more, Dynamis is far weaker than ether. Under normal circumstances, its effects are drowned out by the latter. On account of which, beings comprised of and reliant upon the ether, like you and I, are unable to make practical use of Dynamis. Tis a truly esoteric thing, known to but a select few scholars. 
Okay, okay, so that kind of makes sense of why the fact that they're sundered means that they're being more influenced by this, because when you're sundered, your ether is weaker. So, therefore, Yakusha or Dynamis has more influence. And theoretically. Interesting. Intriguing. And then, given the limitations you described, why create Meteor? For fun. Our star, Etheris, is especially rich in ether, so much so that its name is derived from it. However, when we consider all energy in existence here and in the vast space beyond, Dynamis may account for as much as 68.3%. That's an extremely precise number. I'm going to have to ask where it came from. The more abundant form by far. Were we able to control it? We could open the door to limitless possibilities. Did you accidentally start the final days by fucking around with this? It is not unlike a gently flowing stream, unable to break through the dam of ether barring its path. But if we could imbue the stream with the vigor of a raging river... Yeah, okay, fucked around with it, huh? Not that I have such grand ambitions. Sounds like you do. Nay. I merely wish to create a being that could traverse the great expanse. The relative scarcity of ether beyond the bounds of this star was a concern. And so, I looked to another source of energy by necessity. That being Dynamis. No wonder her ether is so thin. Precisely. Yours is thin too. Like an entelechy. Like me. So... Are we the same? Entelechies. That's the question, eh? The last one, jeez. Hmm. <laughs> Guess we'll do the second one. I have been known to transcend my limits with nothing but determination. That sounds more akin to the desperate flailings of a wild beast when facing imminent death. Yeah, would yeah, uh-huh. Uh-huh, wanna bet? Come see me in a couple thousand years. A deficit of ether alone does not an entelechy make. It would, however, make it easier for you to interact with Dynamis. And limited though its influence may be, this quality could prove the difference between victory and defeat. You do well not to underestimate it. So, yeah, ba basically, basically. I hope they bring um, Omega stuff into this, because this is also something relevant in the Omega story as well. Omega couldn't, just by analyzing us, Omega couldn't figure out what was special, and it's probably because it was looking at Ether and not Dynamis. And it couldn't harness it. As it didn't know how. <laughs> oh dear. I'd forgotten about the poor fellow. You must excuse me a moment while I go and verify a few more things. Never before had I heard of Dynamis, or 
And to Leckie's. I can only assume the Elpis flower was submitted to the Bureau before I joined. Intellect here or no, we're friends in thinness. All appears to be well. We should take one. Goo boo, enjoy your goo boo. May go get insulted by Emmett again. Not that I or anyone else would be able to make use of it, even if we knew, but it irks me to discover that there is an entirely different form of energy. No one told me. That personal annoyance aside, Hermes's knowledge is undeniably impressive. Given that there are none among the fourteen who specialize in the Celestial, he would be a welcome addition. Uh, addition, probably, is the word you're looking for there. Hmm. Assuming he can be persuaded to join, that is. I still can't understand his hesitation. Ooh! Oh no, I want to know the answers to both of these. Why did you join the convocation? Oh, you wish to know why Emmett Selk was chosen for the convocation? I should be glad to share the tale. Hem, it began when... Not another word. Lest you've forgotten, or to learn about Hermes, not me. My misspent youth is not your concern. What now? Extra dialogue. I want to learn about the convocation. Hmm. If you would accompany us, I suppose you should at least know that much. The Convocation of Fourteen is a governing body that determines myriad policies. Our goal is to ensure that all is right in creation. Our star may know a brighter future. As the name suggests, the council is comprised of fourteen offices, each of which is held by an individual chosen for their surpassing abilities. Depending on the office, one is required to either be an authority in a certain field, or possess skills that would facilitate the performance of their stipulated duties. The former category includes Mitron, specialist in aquatic life, Ogriff, specialist in terrestrial life and husbandry, Almeru, specialist in fungal and plant life, Merilalt, specialist in medicine and healing, and La Habrea, specialist in creation magics, who has brought forth phantom beings of the highest complexity. As for the latter category, there is Altima, advocate of the arts, Igiorm, champion of enlightenment and rhetoric, Pashtarot, preserver of discipline and order, Emmet Selk, keeper of the ethereal realm, or underworld in the vernacular, Van Daniel, pursuer of extant phenomena, and Azem. Traveler of the world and counselor to the people. What? Should I be revealing such details to you? Don't be silly. Even children know this much, and you would do well to remember it all. I'm marking it down! Marking it down! Oh, sweet. I'll tell you the tale when we're away from set. Perfect. Looking forward to it. Thank you. <laughs> He's just gonna tell me anyway. Like, this is great. Ow! My leg. Okay. Intellecty? Okay, I already saw that one. Yep. My apologies for the wait. I have inspected the Ampelos to my satisfaction. All is well with the creature, and I dare say it won't be long ere it is released unto the world. Another creation, however, reportedly isn't faring so well. The Charybdis. That is what we shall tend to next. If you would follow me, my friends, we shall return to the main isle and head north. Now, there are several things that could be called a Charybdis, I think. It could be a behemoth. But, I mean, behemoths are doing pretty well. It could be one of the, the danger noodle snake things, because they also use Charybdis as a spell. We will find out. It occurred to me, this is the second to last map. So it's like, it's not like we're almost done, because we still have the- Oh! It's these guys! Okay. Not what I would have expected. These guys are doing great in the Sea of Clouds. Look, I got, um, I don't remember what they're called, but I have one somewhere. 
It's the new one. That's the one. Yeah, see? Mine's red. Great. Anyway. Why is this one blue and shiny? Ah, oh, forgive me, I thought another member of the convocation had come. This is turning out to be an eventful day. Whoa, the weather has changed to umbral wind. That's fun. I'd have to do with just this corner. A slight difference in etheric balance between these charybdises. By this, it may be assumed they aren't the original creations, but their offspring. A serpentine bird or a winged snake. Understand there is a problem with one of the Charybdis. Yes, that's right. As you know, the Charybdis is based on a sea creature. Owing to adjustments to enhance its affinity to wind, it is capable of flight. The specimens created from the concept could all fly without issue, but a problem arose in subsequent generations. This third generation creature was born with an etheric balance leaning strongly towards water, its aquatic origin reasserting itself, it would seem. The result being its affinity to wind is diminished, and it cannot fly. No matter what we try, we can't get it to rise even the slightest bit. For such change to manifest in so few generations, I fear they are too unstable, flawed. With your permission, I will revert the creatures and recommend to the Bureau that the concepts be revised. With its etheric balance leaning towards water, the Tribdis would indeed struggle to manipulate wind. Yet it is too early to conclude that it cannot fly. Having failed at first, it may simply have developed a fear. I shall transform and fly with it, helping it to manipulate wind until it finds its wings. What? You need to go to such length. No, but of course not. Transformation is an art in which one manipulates a vast quantity of ether to construct another body around oneself. In practice, this allows one to assume any conceivable form, and thereby transcend the limits of one's flesh. Yet convenient though it may be, transforming in the presence of others is considered vainglorious in the extreme, as uncouth and unseemly as running about robeless, shameful. Am I to understand you make a habit of this? Nothing of the sort, it's just that when transformed, I can wield the wind and fly. It may seem excessive, but what is our shame mixed with the lives of these creatures? We deserve a chance, and we owe it to them to do all in our power. Oh yeah, you would absolutely hate Amon. Eek. Be that as it may. Hmm. Yes, I believe I have a solution. In itself, may I trouble you to move that Shrebus away from its fellows? Somewhere out of sight. Meanwhile, I'd like the rest of you to help me prepare here. What mischief are you scheming now? No mischief, I assure you. I would but spare you the need to report to your colleagues that Hermes committed an indiscretion. So have a little faith and run along. I trust you don't mind. I mean, yeah, if he doesn't like to see things die, like, reverting these things back into ether is killing them, basically. So he's trying to do anything he can to avoid having to kill them and basically treat them like the living creatures they are. Basically.
Good Selk is out of sight. Good. Let's speak of the plan. The stroke of genius, really. Have Emmett Selk train the Jerib there. Aside from being able to fly untransformed, he can readily see ether currents, and with his adept spellcraft, he can also employ suitable wind magics to guide the creature along. While he is indeed capable of all you described, it is not his duty, and I am loath to trouble him with it. Don't be, as I mentioned, but also be for his own sake. That's settled. Let's begin at once. Carolyn, I want you to go to Emmett Selk. Tell him that you have a favor to ask. You will be disinclined to cooperate at first, but you mustn't be discouraged. Our friend, the trick is to be unflaggingly persistent. Now off you go. Good luck. Oh no, 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 no. How many times am I going to have to say this? <sighs> How dare you. There hasn't been one of these yet. The loveliest of branches. Okay. Nothing. I'm not gonna smack talk anybody. I learned my lesson last time. <laughs> oh, this is really funny. This is like a circle of all of us standing around going, hey, 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 I have a favorite ask. Hey, I have a favorite ask. Hey, hey, I have a favorite ask. <laughs> this is really funny, actually. Well, are your preparations for the scheme that is clearly not a scheme complete? Oh no, I'm watching this person having to type more than one thing. I can't just copy-paste. I have a favor to ask. Oh no you don't, I'm not lifting a finger. Ugh, I don't know what Hythlodeus is up to and I will not be made to know. I refuse. Okay, Hythlodeus. Is to be believed, relentless insistence may serve to wear down the ever wary Emmett Selk. Let's continue. We must be case sensitive and respect punctuation. Please, Emmett Selk. Oh. There we go. <laughs> Only two this time, thank God. For now. No, no, no. You are not foisting this nonsense on me. I'm given to understand you have the power to help the Charybdis, and should be quite willing to do so. And so I appeal to your better nature, most benevolent Emmet Selk. Please teach her to fly. Or else Hermes will transform! Right now! Now, now, there's no need to go quite that far. Altruism is its own reward. As I'm sure he would agree. Oh, would he now? And who contrived to put me in this position, pray tell? Nothing so devious. I merely suggested a possible course of action. Please, Emmett Selk! You're gonna say no to that cute little baby face? Come on. I did not come all this way to play nursemaid to your creations. I thank you to remember this favor and let it be the last. <laughs> did it. Oh. 
Of course. Of course it's the Grani. Uh... I will aid it once it is taken to the air. It falls to you to shepherd it skyward. Those who don't know, that's the collector's edition mount for Shadowbringers. Well, let's relax and enjoy the spectacle, shall we? All the Emmett Selk RPers frantically upgrading their Shadowbringers version to the collector's edition. <laughs> you were wondering why Emmett Selk joined the convocation. Truth be told, he wasn't the first choice for the office. I was, on the strength of my ability to see Ether. But I declined the offer. For though my vision is exceptional, I am pedestrian in all other aspects. Worse even, quite abysmal when it comes to manipulating Ether, for example. Couldn't transform even if I had a mind to do so. What good is the ability to perceive a problem if one cannot act to address it? Emmett Selk has no such shortcomings. He excels in vision and manipulation both, the latter to an extraordinary degree. If there is a mage more powerful, I do not know of them. Thus did I recommend him for the office in my stead. And I wasn't the only one. Far from it. Countless others vouched for his skill and character. People the world over, to whom he had previously lent a helping hand. <laughs> oh, how surprised he was. Claimed he hadn't done anything remarkable for anyone. Modest to a fault. He deserved every bit of acclaim he received. Yet, he may well have gone unappreciated were it not for a mutual friend. A singular soul who can't help but involve herself in the business of others. Where she walks, excitement is certain to follow. Her antics irritate Emmett Selk to no end. But much of his grumbling stems from genuine concern. When our friend calls, he never fails to answer and lend his talents. And in the course of doing so, he himself came to be recognized and respected by those around him. Huh. They are truly remarkable individuals, and I'm proud to call them friends. This is cute. This is really cute. To help them realize their dreams. This will be my greatest contribution to our world. And when they have fulfilled their respective purposes, so too shall I have fulfilled mine. And together we may return to the star. Look at me, spilling my innermost secrets. I can't seem to help it with you. I can only assume it is due to the color of your soul. I just don't understand how you can be so alike and yet so different. <laughs> well done, my pet. Well done! Ah, yes. I dare say the Charybdis will be fine here on. Why don't you go and signal to Emmett Selk? Let him know that his arduous task is at an end. That's cute. That's cute. I say chat is nothing, but I have a favor. Please, Emmett. <laughs> oh, shout out to all the people that have to sit here and do that. Oh crap, I walked away before.
Okay, well. Emerging from his reverie, Emmett Selk notices you and begins to descend with Charybdis. Apparently it's a K sound, I'm not a check. I have no words to express my gratitude. Thanks to you, Charybdis has learned to fly. and have a pleasant chat. I'm sure you did. The creature needed some small assistance at first, but soon it was flying more or less on its own. I doubt you will need to repeat the lesson. That was truly impressive. I witnessed it all from afar. I heard this flies. Indeed. With this, we've proven that even a creature with skewed etheric balance is Fight. Though we helped it to achieve this, the Charybdis is a herd animal. They may well aid their struggling kin in like fashion if and when the need arises. Keeping this in mind, I bid you continue observing them. If that is what you want. But if I may say so, rather than hoping an idealistic possibility comes to pass, it would not be simpler to have the concept adjusted? That way, we could guarantee that anomalies such as this specimen are never born in the first place. These creatures are already here. We will spare no effort in giving them a chance to survive. As you wish, Chief. As you wish. Don't worry. Well, that concludes all of my present tasks. Just return. Just right now. I'm swaying as if the music is still playing and it's not. <laughs> okay. Already established that that's on the platform. All the creations are happy. That makes me happy. You've seen what I do. Was it everything you were expecting? I thoroughly enjoyed myself. The end, most of all. What? Want to apologize for forcing me to help, do you? Save your breath. You didn't force me to do anything. I merely chose the most expeditious way to have done with an impediment to our business. Tell me, Carol. Course of watching me, have you learned aught of value? Dynamics. Dynamics seem promising. Dynamis, you say. I'm curious that such an obscure phenomenon should be of interest to you. Hermes, what good fortune to find you here. Something the matter? Lycaon. I'm afraid it's done it again. No sooner did we release one for observation than it set upon the nearby occupy, slaughtering them. Was the creature hungry? Or somehow provoked? I had just fed them myself, and the occupants were keeping a wide berth. It is the nature of the Lycaon that is to blame. 
Innate viciousness. Temperament aside, it is an outstanding creation, perfect in form and function. It may not be suited for release. I have no doubt that the Bureau will accept its concept for preservation. In any case, there's no point in postponing the inevitable. Rose will revert them all once. The paperwork is in order. Where's the scene of the incident? Just off the path of the Twelve Wonders. As you make your way, you should see it on the left. I don't know if Doros is still there, however. Let's wait. If this is part of his work, then I would observe. We follow. I'm all having different names, it's just a matter of like which creature is this? <laughs> what are we talking about? Ixion one again? I mean I'm gonna do it because it's here, but like ah. This one seems to be up a lot. one other person in here. An ether current quest. Oh, those are the occupants. Agnesis, part one. Welcome, friend. Agnesis, I am so pleased. And I manage this region under the authority of Chief Hermes, the head overseer of Elpis. And you are. Hmm. Oh, how unusual. A soul bearing familiar. A familiar must have a mission, and yet you offer no message and carry no cargo. Are you perhaps here for the purposes of observation? Yes, that must be it. In which case, you need only mention my name to Ch Charmian, and she will gladly give you a tour of our domain. Soak it all in. Yeah, 
Yes? Em, what can I do for you? Carolyn, is it? An overseer Sokos wishes me to act as your guide? Oh. Oh, no, I didn't mean it like that. I would be more than happy to show you around. I'm simply wondering why the overseer chose to send you to me, of all people. I haven't been here long myself, truth be so quite recently, I was wholly engaged in a prolonged research project at the Academia Anider. Apparently there are other, more experienced individuals who could provide a more comprehensive... This scrumbling is hardly constructive, now is it? The task was given to me and I will attempt to cover the most salient features of our facilities to the best of my abilities. After all, it is not every day that one is asked to indulge the curiosity of such a rare and fascinating visitor. We can commence the tour this very moment, if you like. And let us begin. Hmm. You know, rather than have me lecture you as we walk along, I think observing firsthand what we do here in uh, Anagorag. The more I try and say it, the worse it gets. It's probably uh, Anagnorisis? It's probably not Isis, it's probably Isis. Anyway, it will prove more beneficial. Point you in the right direction, and you can question my colleagues to your heart's content. Once we've completed a circuit, we can return and speak to Overseer. Oh, and who is your friend? Zem's familiar? Why, you appear so astute and deliberate in your thinking. I'd very much like to make an extended study of your composition and consciousness. Oh, do forgive my forwardness. It is my duty to chart the behavior of familiars, and I find it ever so diverting. Arcane servants are rarely permitted to roam the world at all, but roam the world at will, you see. But our research here is given special dispensation, once the subjects are properly registered as concepts, of course. There are times when familiars are tasked with tending cattle, or must otherwise coexist with other living beings. Such projects are brought to me, and I am responsible for observing and evaluating their potential compatibilities. Oh, but of course, if a Zem might grant us permission, then you could abide here for a few years while I analyze. And on that note, we really must be moving along. Step lively, Carolyn! <laughs> Trying to take me for the study. No, 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 goodbye. No compositional analysis, thank you. Goodbye. Saw that Pokeball. Terrifying. Paramonos. Who do we have here? A familiar of some kind, judging by your ethereal structure. Yes, I am accompanying Carolyn here on a tour around Anagnorisis. The Overseer. Tour? Feel free to wander as you please, of course, but I advise keeping your distance from the larger creatures. The fauna I have under observation occupy the top tier of the food chain, and do not take kindly to intruders in their territory, especially the specimens found on the other islands. It can be exceedingly hostile. While I am sure you are quite capable of defending yourself, no one appreciates a surprise tusk through the abdomen. Thank you for the warning. We will proceed with due caution. Hello. Hello, Charmian. Was there something? The Overseer asked that I give this familiar a tour of the grounds, and I thought the best way to do that was to show her what we do here firsthand. I see. Well, as my work is rather difficult to demonstrate, I hope a brief explanation will suffice. Our creations are many and varied, but I mainly preside over the plant life. When it comes to watching certain grasses grow, one must be prepared to observe over the course of several years, and in the case of trees, sometimes decades. Tedious, perhaps, yet necessary. Plants are capable of altering an entire habitat, and their presence as a food source has an enormous influence on the local wildlife. Is that the sort of thing you wish to know? Yes, that was perfect. Thank you. I think we've covered the main areas of interest. All that's left now is to speak with Seer Sokwe. I 
I see you've completed your tour. Almost. We spoke with those in charge of the various facets of Anagnorisis, but I thought it would be fitting to end this visit where it began. With you, Overseer of Soakways. I see. And what is your impression of the work we do here? It requires equal levels of passion and patience. I'm glad we could help further your worldly education. I'm glad to see you enjoyed the experience. At least I hope you did. You're truly a masterpiece of creation. Only a soul-bearing familiar could demonstrate such robust cognitive and cognitive. Cognitive and cog cogitative faculties? Oof. Were you perhaps designed to inspire others? I feel something special has been woven into your aura. Eh. Have an interesting presence, to say the least. Please stay a while and share more of your thoughts with us. Yes, I second this invitation. In all the long years I have resided here, never have I encountered such a unique entity. One of us M's, no less. I would love, and I say this completely unsarcastically, I would love to do this one. But not right now. It's not like a haha -ha, funny joke, thanks for the ether current, see you never. Like, I genuinely want to do these ones, and it's not doing them right now because, like, the story. I am compelled, but not compelled enough to stop what I'm doing. Uh, there's a boss one. The rustling of murderous leaves. Huh? Oh, it's not a boss one, it's just a kill one. These things have faces? Oh, they do. What do they have? Single eye. Weird. Time to murder. Charges of a few, uh, onslaught now. I'm assuming that this fate is just these three, and that's why they're so unreasonably chalky.
Okay, good. <laughs> that is indeed correct. In fact, it might be a fourth one. Oh, what's that? Oh, is this the thing that we're supposed to be not leaving exist? Because it looks like not a great thing. <laughs> oh, he's walking around. Oh, he's an A rank. I have never seen a creature that looks quite like that. Gurungach. So he's like that standard, like, like we have seen like bodies shaped like that before but like the head is kind of his snoot's kind of buried in the wall but like he's got a long snoot yeah look at that snoot i like really thin legs and really muscular arms for some reason as well Heavy, Hermes is pain. Doki is no easy prey. With its hooves and horns, it was designed to be formidable even on land. It didn't stand a chance against the Lycaon. There's some beasts as Lycaon, but where is it now? Lacerations and burns ooh, are unmistakable. The Lycaon was indeed responsible. But the creature is nowhere to be seen. Boros must have taken it away. Man makes his base at the Twelve Wonders. I shall go and seek him out there. Him and Silk and I will search the area for good measure, just to make sure the Lycaon did not escape. 
My thanks. Let us meet at the Twelve Wonders when you have finished. I will go on ahead. Let's follow with Caroline. Come, come. It's down this path and over the bridge. to the southwest. Conveniently, that is the direction we are going. Grips. It's just called the grips. Why are you here? You don't look like a griffin. Another A rank. Okay. The Twelve Wonders. Hermes is looking for Doros. Let's look for Doros, too. He's a man with long blonde hair. I think I'll know him when I see him. Huh? Oh, sweet. Let me just hop on this and steal it, eh? Yep. They arguing over which one is better. Oh, what an enchanting familiar. I would be delighted to assist in your little journey of discovery and personal growth. Oh, what do you do here? My role is to maintain the wonders, and thus the climate across Elpis. I ensure that our every environment meets the needs of our flora, fauna, and staff, of course. In bronze representing each part of Aetherus are recreated here in Elpis, that we might gain a robust understanding of our concept's potential. As such, maintaining the appropriate balance region by region is tricky work, but more than worth the effort. Let's see. What kind of place is this? Twelve Wonders is the wellspring of Elpis's weather, after a fashion. Here do we employ the latest spellcraft from Amarot to maintain and adjust the assorted climes through which our creations frolic. This purpose is. Naturally, as in any other part of Elpis, we also observe and experiment with said concepts. This yeah. conversation being perhaps one such experiment. So each island is like a blonde haired woman. If you're here with Medion, then I assume you're on an errand for Hermes. What can I do for you? Sorry, wrong person. We're looking for Doros. Ah, I see. We do have similar hair, so people often mistake us from afar. I hope you find him soon. I wanna talk to all these people. So get back and record today's results, I should finally be able to put that report. Not Doros. His hair is long, but the color is wrong. Let's see. I think she'll probably leave if I wander too far out of here. Oh no, she's still coming with me. Okay, well, we're gonna go do a fate, Medion. Don't mind killing things. She'll probably leave. Surely. We will screw off.
No? Okay. Well, you can just stand there then while I kill these mobs. Okay, she finally left. Okay. Wondering how far I would have to get before she'd finally go back. Really filling out the other category of teleport options with this expansion. Okay, Doros. Paying attention. That's Doros. Well now, if it isn't Medion, what brings you here? Ah, I thought I heard familiar voices. Didn't realize you two had decided to help me search for Doros. Thank you. You're in charge of the Lycaons, I believe. Where are they now? Out in the fields in restraints, frenzied as they were, I couldn't well return them to Kitsis. Once I've submitted my report, I'll see them reverted without delay. It's as he says, the beasts are indeed quite ferocious. You're one of the fourteen. What brings you here? Nothing you need concern yourself with, as you were. We've heard the news that a Lycaon slaughtered Occupies. As the observer in charge, you are of the opinion that they are not fit to be released? Aye, I am. Their abnormal aggression and exceptional strength makes for a highly problematic combination. It matters not where they are released. Lycaons would threaten other species and upset the natural. Could it be that the specimens observed are an outlier? Highly unlikely. We've created a good many of them, all exhibited the same tendencies. Even when we used Kairos to begin with a fresh slate, their behavior was unchanged. Kairos? A memory reconfiguration system. Chief himself created it. 
allows us to erase or alter memories that we may observe creations in different environmental conditions without needing to remake them from scratch. Quite impressive. Potentially dangerous and potentially a plot device to consider. Depending on the intensity of the etheric emissions, Pashtarot may wish to have words with you. Rest assured, I've kept all values within prescribed limits, and to prevent misuse, its applications are limited to those authorized by the Chief Overseer. Do not misunderstand. To manipulate a subject's memories is an intrusive act I deeply abhor, but it is still preferable to execution. Come now, Chief. Let's not be so melodramatic. What was born of Aether is simply being reduced to its original state. I know the distinctions concern you, but we mustn't lose sight of the bigger picture. Rational choices for the sake of a more prosperous star. If a creation cannot be properly studied, even with the aid of Kairos, we remake it. If a creation is deemed a detrimental existence, we unmake it. It is all for the greater good, and none question the necessity of such routine processes. I understand these things, I do. I would never think to unleash a clear and undeniable threat unto the world. Yet insignificant though their individual lives may be next to all creation, it is all the Lycaons have. Before we seal their fates, we owe it to these beings to exhaust all options, to ensure that nothing has been overlooked. If you insist, let me provide you with a full report, and we may take it from there. Would it be possible for us to attend the discussion, that M itself may better carry out his duties? By all means. I show them to the meeting room. This thing is... What is... We have a duty to the star, this I know, but it doesn't mean we don't also have a responsibility to the lives we bring into existence here. To man, other beings are just things, to be used and controlled, like magic. That's what Hermes told me once. I fear this discussion may take a while, during which time... Edeon, are you feeling unwell? It's not me, Hermes, it's you. I won't go to the meeting. I'll stay with Carolyn. Loath though I am to impose, may I leave Medion in your care again? I'm in your debt, if you'll excuse me. Help me with something, Carolyn. Meeting will make Hermes sad. I want to cheer him up with a flower. Hermes likes flowers the most of all the creations in Elfet. Most creations are expected to be interesting or beautiful, or strong, better in some way. But flowers are different. They're designed to suit our emotions, what we feel and want to convey. Hermes likes that. I can't make flowers, so I'll search for one. I want you to search with me. Let's start here. Twelve Wonders. Brick purple flowers, bigger than your hands, adorn. Ooh, so big and bright. I love them. But they might be too bright. You have to think of the recipient. That's what Hermes said. Be over here. All slender tree rises before you. You crane your neck to look for flowers. No flowers. If there were apples, we could have covered them in syrup. Let's head outside next. Don't worry, we won't wander far.
array of beautiful flowers grow in the bed, the mix of colors forming a pattern. These would be better for they're hedged in. That means we shouldn't touch them. They're either under observation or poisonous. Any other place should be fine though. Let's keep looking. Poisonous flowers, you say? Familiar plant. It's a cat trap. Set on a tall, thin stalk, the oddly shaped flower is mesmerizing in its undulations. Oh, cognac, a flower that can move. When Hermes wasn't looking, it shot seeds at him. Not a good gift, me. But you're good, Carolyn, at spotting flowers. We'll find something soon. Find nothing promising nearby. Best common looking grasses with some two tiny flowers. Around here. Ah, over there, Carolyn. Something big. He huh? Can't help but notice that there's a marble here without a name. Ah, malodorous grass. A terrible stench reminiscent of sodden old boots pervades the air. Without a doubt, the culprit is a morbid-like creature before you. It's an Adonis. The thing around its mouth look like petals, but the flowers are the orbs on its head. When Hermes inspected it, it swallowed him up. He didn't leave his room for days. What do you think, Carolyn? Like it? Uh, definitely not! Probably not the good sort of memory. So not this one either. Finding a good flower. It's harder than I thought. I'm sorry, Carolyn, but can we search a little more? Maybe as far as the fields over there. I'll pick something after that, I promise. green fields stretch out before you, ending where the sky begins. No! Dang it. Ruining my immersion! There's nothing. The shiny thing over there. What could it be? Anything. Object. Huh? Oh, of course. Oh, Elpis flowers. They're here too. Hermes likes and dislikes them at the same time. Like me, they're entelechy. Like me, they feel his pain and turn dark. That's only for Hermes, though. For others, they're always white and bright. The flower was dark in your home? Then you have it too? A dark emotion? Pain. Sor and sorrow of loss. 
figure. Let's see. Hermes has known the same. The feeling that a part of you is gone. Again and again. No one notices. Please, Carolyn, won't you lend it to me? Zoro? I want you to make the flower dark in front of Hermes. He has been in a dark place since before he created me. He needs to know that he isn't there alone. Others are sad too. It's okay. Really? You'll do it? Thank you. Thank you. It's more to me than I can see. Can't wait to see how Hermes reacts. Let's go back and fetch him. It's going somewhere. Seems they're still talking. Let's wait until they finish. for me. You've finished talking? Yes. We've come to a decision. My thanks for keeping me to your company. Emmet Selk and Pithlidaeus have already retired to their rooms. There is room for you too, if you would follow me. Wait! I want to show you something first. Elpis flowers? Go on. Don't make yourself real sad. Think about all the people that have died. Ah. You're not the only one, Hermes. Others feel sad too. You're not alone. I see Mision has shared much with you. May we talk a moment? Westbrook. Okay. Band of the green eyes. They all have like custom irises. It's very nice. Hedgehog! Okay, goodbye. I do not think it wrong that we live for the star, that we strive to make it a better place. Yet, in carrying out my duties here, there are times when I am plagued by doubt. Do you recall what Hithlidaeus said when we first spoke of my nomination? Death is the privilege of those who have fulfilled their purpose, a choice they embrace of their own free will. And when they depart, it is always beautiful. Perhaps it is. But only for man. Creations that he deems useless are discarded with nary a second thought. Some scarcely born into the world, afforded a handful of breaths before life and potential are abruptly extinguished. 
We make an effort to spare them the pain. They sense what awaits. Rage and anguish and cower and fear. And it is not beautiful. Yet no one cares. No one. So fixated are we upon the duty that we do not pause to question the method. Pain and suffering, confusion and despair, writ plain in the eyes of those poor creatures. Yet no one sees. We turn a blind eye and carry on in blissful ignorance. Not amiss. And always, always the blossoms shine pure and white. A contradiction so blatant I could scream, want to scream. How can you all accept this aberration? And I wonder, am I the aberration for thinking thus? And I am filled with dread. But now I know I'm not alone. Not the only one for whom the flowers weep. I won't ask what you thought as you kneeled beside the Alpis. Or if you only did it at Meteon's insistence. Nevertheless, I thank you. To know that you too have experienced suffering is a comfort. Glad I could be of service. Sounds almost exactly like something I would say, like IRL, so... Hmm. To so willingly lend an ear to ease my burden. You are a strange one. The stars in the heavens. Know you what they are? Though it is too far to tell, each glittering light could be a world not unlike a theorist. A world filled with life. So many stars, so many lives. For us, there may be no higher purpose than to live for our world. But what of the other living beings out there? What is it that gives their lives meaning? That drives them day after day after day? To pose that question to our undiscovered cousins, I created beings of dynamis who can traverse the vast emptiness between the stars. Meteon and her sisters. Oh, there's more than one. Hold on, this is starting to turn into Warframe now. <laughs> it's not, but like, I just had like a moment where it's like, mm. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> I, sisters. How many of them are there? She has a great many of them. A lot. And they have already departed on their journey, traveling to one star and then the next in search of life. As one might expect, exploration on such a grand scale is rife with difficulties, and thus far I've naught to show for it. <coughs> but I have faith that we will make some manner of discovery ere long. Bigfoot, thank you for the resub, but if you're watching the stream, get out! <laughs> Spoilers! <laughs> Unless you're ahead of me, in which case, you know, you're welcome to hang out. And when we do, I should be glad to share our findings with you, in gratitude for your kindness. This is, there's a lot of potential things happening here. Oh, okay, watch sexies. Okay, so you already know what's going on. Okay. Never mind, you are permitted to stay. <laughs> There's a lot of potential things being set in motion for this, like... The stars being investigated. All this it's other crap. It's getting rather late. Hmm. We had best find our beds. It would not do for both of us to be sleep deprived on the morrow. Come, Meteon. Let's head back. Hmm. 
Okay. Article familiar returns, and after causing all manner of trouble while we were in our meeting, I'm sure. Are you able to get some rest? Please do not hesitate to let us know if you're feeling tired. We might exhaust your scarce reserves of ether. Glad Hermes saw the flowers. Thank you. Help, I hope. Today will be difficult. An all too brief interlude, perhaps, but it is time I attend to my next task. As Emmet Silk and Hypodeus are aware, we reached a verdict regarding the fate of the Lycan. Like seven were created for observation, and all seven must be unmade. Doros has followed the correct protocols, and as chief overseer, I can find no fault in his judgment. The Lycaons like would disrupt a natural order, ravaging and consuming other species. Till they themselves starve and perish. They cannot be released into the wild, and they cannot be allowed to remain here in Elthus. I intend to petition the Bureau of the Architects to have the concept preserved as a restricted purpose hazardous life form. Hythlodeus has pledged to support me in this endeavor. Yet, whatever the Bureau decides, the existing Lycaons have served their purpose. Theros has already isolated the creatures and is preparing to carry out the necessary measures. I will join him forthwith. It is my duty to witness the conclusion to this study. If you are resolved, then we have but to accompany you. Of course, let us be off then. Turn to the main aisle. I still want to know what these things are. Oh, either current quest. Gala cat. Hello. You're so cute. Hi, what a familiar essence you have. Like that of a familiar. You're familiar with the concept. God. That's a lot. <laughs> oh my, just a little joke. Carolyn, was it? I am Hypotho. Yes, yes, we're getting to that. Carolyn, say hello to our familiar friend here. She's an Ilaros. The Ailaroi are one of our newest creations, highly attuned to abnormalities in their environment. The first sign of danger, they'll sound the alarm, by which I mean mule loudly. Though we do our best to observe all of our creations, Elpis is simply too large to maintain a constant vigil over each and every temperamental species. A more efficient means of detecting conflict between creatures was in order. Thus have I taken this Ailaros under my wing to further develop her capabilities in this area, and she does enjoy our little walks. This evening, we are testing her ability to pinpoint sites of conflict. Would you like to observe? Simply tell her that her task has begun, and she'll do her utmost to locate disruptive creatures. Please do subdue any unruly subjects once you've found them, and have beasts run the muck. West. Okay. The sanctuary. I think I'm actually going to stop for now, because uh, I don't want to... I feel like what's happening with the, like, MSQ is just gonna snowball from this point and this is like a good downtime spot um and also we're pretty much at an, a 10 hour block which is about what i wanted to do uh, i am gonna try and get into the queue and get things started earlier tomorrow so maybe i can go for a little longer get a third one in but for now we are done uh thank you for hanging out i'm totally logging out in this glamour <laughs> Um, see you guys tomorrow whenever the queue decides to let me in. Thanks for hanging out. Bye!